A very good morning to one and all. On behalf of all at IGNO Regional Center, Kochi, uh, uh, especially our Regional Director, Dr. J.S. Dorothy Madam, my colleagues at the Regional Center, Kochi, Dr. V.T. Jalaja Kumari, Assistant Regional Director, Dr. S. Vijay Raghavan, Assistant Regional Director, and all staff of RC Kochi, and also my dear learners, myself, Dr. Prasita Unnikrishnan, warmly welcome you all to this open session come enrichment session on the topic entrepreneurial transformation of conduct of education in India and beyond by a very well-known resource person and Dr. Vargis uh, Pandalukaranan, professor at Rajgiri School of Engineering and Technology. Sir, just to brief you about uh, the activities at Regional Center Cochin, just I would like to uh, highlight here that the Innovation Club at Regional Center Cochin was initiated under the encouragement of the NC, NCID, that is the National Center for Innovations in Distance Education. And uh, this NCID was established in December 2005 at IGNO headquarters, which is located in Delhi. Uh, it is a facility for pro, uh, promoting, supporting, re-engineering and disseminating innovations in open and distance learning system. And uh, NCID, in fact, is a ground for uh, nurturing bright and inquisitive minds whose ideas and explorations are expected to develop the Odeon system to suit the needs of the generation next. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, the center's goal is to develop a culture of continued search for new and innovative solutions to offer seamless education for all and to achieve cost effic efficacy in its operations and provide borderless access to quality education and training. At Regional Center Kochi, a series of monthly lectures, in fact, identified as enrichment sessions, are being held at RC Kochi since September 2018. And the sessions are uh, usually held with an objective to enrich and generate awareness amongst the learners of IGNO on a wide range of topics ranging from career management, MOOCs, e-support services of IGNO, ICT interventions in education, and environmental sustainability. So, sir, we have been holding a series of sessions on the uh, set topics. Uh, and in fact, uh, uh, we are also, uh, uh, NCID at IGNO headquarters is also actively involved in documentation and dissemination of various innovations in the ODL system. And to facilitate for the easy reference of the stakeholders also, the center is involved in encouraging creativity and innovation in the ODL system, as well as in the capacity building of teachers and learners. So uh, with this uh, a few words, I would like to uh, introduce our resource person for today's uh, session, uh, Professor Varghese uh, Pandalukaran. Just to give a brief about the resource person, uh, I would just like to highlight here is that he is a professor at Rajagiri School of Engineering and Technology, Kochi, and holds a doctoral degree in engineering. Doctor of Engineering from the Technical University of Stuttgart, Germany. He has a master's degree in physics from Kochin University of Science and Technology, Kochi. Uh, sir has published uh, 12 research papers on engineering education in national and international conferences and research journals. Sir is also an author of books in uh, literature, spirituality, science, and management. Uh, sir's book in Malayalam language, uh, Buddham Vindum Chirikyunnu, translated Buddha Laughs Again, has even won the Endowment Award of Kerala Sahitya Academy India. And uh, Sir in, has also published a recent book, uh, Content to be Creative, uh, we, which presents a comp compendium of creative thinking methods along with a treatise on the ecosystems for creative thinking and characteristics of creative minds. Sir is also the editor of the education family magazine, Rajagiri Pallikuttam, the education observer since 2013. And uh, Sir regularly writes columns on topics related to creativity, innovation and pedagogy. Uh, sir, we are very uh, honored to have you as our resource persons for today's session. And sir is also an author of a copyrighted uh, pedagogy, namely Pallikutam, Pedagogy for Entrepreneurial Education. Uh, sir, in fact, uh, uh, has been so, uh, I, I must say, very generous in accepting our in, uh, invitation for this session on a, such a short notice. And uh, I'm really humbled and honored to uh, have sir in this session. And sir also mentioned to me that uh, sir uh, takes this uh, topic 
are in a mission mode and it will be especially useful for all of our learners who are in education uh, who are in the education field and sir wants to take his work ahead not only uh, this work is not restricted to this session also but he wants to take it as a, in a mission mode all over india to reach out to various learners uh, who are uh, who, through which he wants to reach out through this entrepreneurial transformation so i warmly welcome you sir for the session and uh, i hand over the session to you sir thank you dr prasid unni krishnan i hope i am audible am i audible yes you know? sir you are audible sir yes oh, sir you are so audible. thank you thank you this is a very elaborate uh, you know presentation of me uh, i am also humbled deeply humbled uh, by getting an invitation from ignau especially the name of the club i really like the innovation club that is the specialization i also try to do that so i love to speak to this community of teacher would be teachers or already teachers you know because uh, uh, this particular uh, theme is going to be very important for our future i am also a teacher uh, you call it a professor but basically we are all uh, teachers you know so uh, i imagine that we are uh, we are being challenged uh, today uh, in a severe way uh, in our teaching profession if you don't invent if you are not creative enough we are condemned uh, to uh, be redundant you know so therefore this is absolutely important that we are, we have to be creative we are condemned to be creative as by the way the title of one of my books so uh, let me try to put my presentation uh, hope it, it works okay. give me a moment hope my presentation is uh, visible to you is it is it all okay because yes, I, I sir. I, yes sir yes yes because i don't see I don't so see. that that's that's why i'm asking you because it's a full uh, yes sir it is visible sir okay great so uh, the theme i just corrected the, the title by the way uh, in a little bit uh, in order to uh, there's a need of entrepreneurial transformation for education in india and beyond this is a global uh, stuff right now i will tell you why it is uh, this kind of transformation and entrepreneurial transformation is urgent need in education sector and as i'm addressing teachers you know which uh, to to the group to which group i also belong you know i just corrected it's not just education it pertains to us pertains to me and pertains to you uh, you know and entrepreneurial transformation if you are delaying in making that entrepreneurial transformation it can make uh, uh, ourselves redundant you know, as a teaching uh, community and you you know you are aware you know this particular uh, one and a half year or more uh, the entire india or the whole world was learning without teachers uh, in a way without teachers you know without schools at least you know they were le learning in a uh, distant mode and your uh, training is also for that distant mode i understand but you know you can imagine that teachers are getting slowly cornered uh, you know because uh, the, there is a uh, there is a uh, analyze, analysis of the results of this particular year and it was said that uh, you know when teachers taught uh, directly the results were less uh, less impressive uh, in comparison to remote teaching of teachers you know the results were all education system in all over india and even beyond the uh, country i imagine the results were better uh, better in a in apostrophe i put it better uh, because i know i also give exams for my students i know that how some misuse are happening so it, it cannot be uh, objectively uh, validated to be better but at the same time there is an impression creeping into the society that the education can take place without teachers <laughs> that's that's the basic thing Uh, not only amazing things say the interesting thing because we are all trained for the profession of education professional teaching and uh, uh, our profession is at risk at challenge you know that's what we have to really really under understand uh, at this juncture maybe uh, parents are thinking why do saps all the softwares like that you know which teaches better way than the uh, the there are uh, the teachers you know so they may think oh why should we send the children to school anymore you know we can keep the children in, in at home and this kind of education can continue uh, i am not telling that it, it will happen immediately but it is likely to happen we are cornered and therefore when we are cornered we are in need of innovation we are in need of uh, better ideas 
better creativity and that is what i'm uh, i'm talking to you today how can we uh, identify a new way of uh, teaching learning process which i just want to call entrepreneurial process of uh, uh, education entrepreneurial way of conducting education this kind of entrepreneurial transformation in education is urgent need of the country and beyond i put not only for india it is beyond because in global perspectives i am conducting i am conducting discussions with the, the educators of other countries also for example in africa and germany for example where i taught myself and i understand that this is a global requirement but it is urgently needed in india because of our demographic uh, uh, advantage which we have where a large number of youth Uh, in india and in africa so india and africa it is going to uh, has to have to take this uh, entrepreneurial transformation immediately than any other nation so let me uh, enter to uh, my presentation with a with a cartoon which i accidentally found in uh, the social media uh, of kill swan and I, i i found it really interesting so this is a, a perspective uh, this is a perspective of education uh, which in the popular uh, uh, space uh, you know in public space uh, because you know that that you can see in the left hand side children uh, they are entering into a system which is called school they are in full colors you know they have uh, yeah blue and colored uh, really color- colorful really imaginative children they are entering into the uh, factory like situation which is uh, called school and what happens in the school is a black box it does not <laughs> show that what happens at the school but they uh, the the public opinion is that you know creativity is oozing out intelligence is oozing out uh, of this factory as a <laughs> waste product you know <laughs> and the people coming out of this factory you know they look like you know strange figures they uh, come as if they are coming from other planet or <laughs> other the space creatures and no not sufficient color for them you know no creativity no intelligence that is what they mean the creative intelligence are already gone as waste waste of the process you know and my, my dear teachers uh, this is the picture the public is carrying today about education uh, we may say that oh uh, we are doing better but at the same time i am asked just telling you about the public understanding of what is happening in it, at the school <coughs> and partly it is also true because you can imagine that we are preparing uh, children for a, a job uh, you know it is said that uh, when a child enters to the uh, from the kind of kindergarten uh, if it is he saw her talents are fitting for a particular job that particular job will not be existing when they come out of the uh, university that is the scenario today the world is changing so fast and therefore the, even the jobs are not available uh, you know it is it's very tense Uh, they are living in a very very short uh, time you know and the new and modified uh, career options are emerging and therefore then the process in the black box the process happening at school where we are major agents for what happens at home parents are uh, in responsibility but what happens at school we are the agents and therefore uh, the, the people don't want to know what is happening in school but they already know uh what are the products coming out of the uh, the school they are without colors without you uh, know all the energy is gone creativity is gone intelligence is gone so this should not be the picture of uh, uh, the future uh, and because you know this is a, a a kind of wrong impression and or right impression but with which we don't want to communicate to the community we are supposed to make a entrepreneurial transformation of our teaching so that the professional teaching also will Uh, not get redundant it will not be outdated if you are not updating there will be updated that's for sure if you are not updating it will be all outdated so let's capture this particular uh, idea of entrepreneurial teaching which i want to present to you as a, a, a kind of solution for the scenario uh, i imagine all of you have uh, made little bit of study um, your teachers of course but you know i am asking the students uh, you are aware of uh, the revised bloom taxonomy i'm i'm pretty sure you are uh, have at least heard this uh, revised bloom taxonomy uh, you should have heard it because you know the entire uh, academic uh, 
curriculum uh, is designed based on revised Bloom's taxonomy. Uh, the student evaluation is happening based on revised Bloom's taxonomy. Uh, the teacher evaluation is also happening based on it. And even the institutions are accredited based on a revised Bloom's taxonomy. So you should be knowing that because the entire uh, in the ecosystem of uh, education in India, not only in India, but all over the world, excepting few Scandinavian countries, you know, which, who do not uh, subscribe to this, uh, you know, revised Bloom's taxonomy is the, the cornerstone of our education process today. And uh, you can imagine, I put in brackets already 2001, 20 years ago, it is made another question today. I'm challenging, uh, I'm putting a serious question uh, today. Uh, you know, is it sufficient uh, that our children are uh, trained uh, just based on revised boom taxonomy? Why? Uh, I'm basic question I'm carrying today is why why we should uh, uh, think about an entrepreneurial transformation for teaching process. So I am asking the question, uh, reducing the question uh, on the uh, uh, the revised boom taxonomy, uh, and I I make a, a statement like this: cognitive skills defined by Revised Bloom's taxonomy is necessary. Of course, it is necessary, but not sufficient for digital natives. Digital natives means, you know, the people who are born into the digital lives of the world. And uh, our students are all digital natives. Maybe we are uh, migrants to the digital space, but our students are all digital natives. So the question is whether the cognitive skills visualized and trained under the brand of a revised Bloom's taxonomy, is it sufficient? Of course, we know it is necessary because all our courses are governed by that, but it's the same question asking a daring question here. And I have already uh, published, uh, or uh, this is accepted public for publication beyond Bloom's taxonomy. You can see at the bottom of the page, emergence of wonderful education is accepted for uh, publication in higher education for future uh, already in July, uh, 8th of July, uh, 2021. So my uh, my concept here is that, you know, uh, the major cognitive skills proposed by uh, Bloom's taxonomy, uh, you know, of education objectives are, as you know, remember, they are all verbs, remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. And they are moving in a hierarchical, hierarchical fashion. The sense that remember will be at the very bottom, which is a broad space for that, but understand over it, reduce the space, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. So, create is the core, the, 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 the top, topmost uh, intellect, uh, cognitive skill which we can train under uh, Bloom taxonomy. And uh, Bloom taxonomy is very happy, and in 2001, it is okay that uh, Bloom taxonomy is okay because you know we are just at the beginning of the digital transformation of the whole world so digital natives are just born this is the uh, the millennial uh, the first year of the millennium 2001 but let's imagine yet let's make an evaluation of this assessment of this 20 years later as we stand today let's take each and every uh, cognitive skill defined by uh, revised global taxonomy let's take for example remember it's absolutely, I told you it is necessary, it's important. Every thinking process needs this, uh, remember. But at the same time, we should not, should not lose sight of the reality that it is an evolutionary vestige of pre-printing age. Hey, what I what do I mean? You know, before printing happened, the print, printing a book happened, uh, the knowledge has to be completely remembered. Uh, verbatim, it should be remembered. remembered because... Uh, the knowledge transfer, the information transfer from generation to generation took place uh, in an oral way. So therefore, correct, exact remembrance of this, uh, what is taught without any, uh, you know, even the sound of it, the, the words should remain exact. Otherwise, the meaning will be all changing, you know. So in order to communicate meaning from one generation to another generation, remember was very important thing. And the, 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 the wisest people of that particular age were people who could remember. Exactly, uh, and verbatim, you know, for example, uh, reading Quran without, uh, without, uh, you know, or, uh, by heart or Bible or Gita. You understand what I mean? So, because, you know, there was no printing happening, so therefore there's no consultation, no storage possibility for the idea. Remember, it's a storage process, uh, a storing of ideas in your memory cells, the brain cells of your memory. But now, if you look today, 
how you can easily see that how redundant it is because you know this is a vestige evolutionary vestige like our uh, you know back uh, you can see a tail uh, there is there for our backbone it is said you know at the end of the backbone there is a structure which is which get, which is similar to uh, our uh, you know a tail uh, humans do not have tail but there is a there's a evolutionary vestige of tail that's what is said so similarly uh, remember is something uh, like a evolutionary vestige of pre-printing age before printing it was all okay and it is necessary also but you know once books are uh, printed and today you know that how many types of types of uh, digital repositories are available not only printing any material you know it, it can cloud space is there you know digital space is there electronic space is there you know and even libraries can be online you know all this kind of stuff happening and you can have everything together in the world wide web and you know so there's remember that the, the, the importance of remember has drastically uh, reduced because we are assisted by technology uh, to remember you know that's the point i'm making now let's take the understanding what happened to understanding of course uh, even there even though there were books you know there should have people to to uh, uh, explain things you know and uh, earlier times you know the wise people were called as walking in encyclopedia because you know whatever question people ask they have ready answers and they're happy you know that is why the kings used to bring uh, people who, who who could immediately answer the question you know uh, right now we can see that you know this is also very much invented because when, today if you have some question you are not asking immediately to some person rather you ask a search, search engine uh, like google you type a question there and you get the answer or you ask the youtube uh, the youtubes it even show how it could be done you understand so the, the process of understanding uh the the, the state uh, sage on the stage that picture of the teacher is already completely changed because you know there's no need of uh, uh, in the age of printing there's no need of uh, a lot of uh, people who are uh, share their understanding. Rather, understanding happens. Understanding is already there. Just put question in the digital space, you get answers. You know that is the way uh, it is happening. And therefore, again, I could I should call the uh, understanding the second important stage of cognitive skills of uh, uh, revised group taxonomy also extinct in, in to a great extent because it has become an evolutionary uh, vestige of the uh, the age of printing. I should say. Now let's take uh, an three uh, next uh, uh, cognitive skills together because we can treat them together apply analyze and evaluate you can imagine this is a, a kind of industrial uh, process happening you know in industry people want to apply the ideas analyze the processes and evaluate it you know so that, that's what's happening as a uh, industrial uh, space now let's imagine uh, i hope you have heard these words of machine learning and industry 4.0 uh, you know, what's happening there? I'm a mechanical engineer, so I, I know what is happening there. Machine learning and industry 4.0 means all these processes apply, analyze, evaluate. Machines are autonomously doing it without any, you know, there's no need of managers for the machines. Machines will manage themselves. Machines will repair themselves. Machines will apply things, analyze themselves, evaluate themselves. And it's, this is what is called industry 4.0. So very soon, very soon, I should say, even uh, this very important uh, in cognitive skills specified by revised Bloom's taxonomy, like apply, analyze, and evaluate, will very soon become evolutionary vestige of the industry age because this industry 4.0, next version of industrial uh, industry happening, and this will be automatically done, autonomously done by machines. Machine learning, as you know, or if you don't know, you know the the, the information from the machine should be carried by, you know, this called. Uh, IoT, uh, uh, Internet of Things, will be collecting, analyzing, evaluating, and then it will be giving to 3D printing, you know, all the process will be controlled by machines themselves, intelligent machines, I am telling. Uh, this is going to be the industry uh, of the future, and therefore, or even today, it is happening very much. It can, if you just observe, even our daily lives are uh, uh, affected by this uh, industry 4.0. Because, you know, you can imagine how, how much intelligence is there for the uh, uh, Facebook, for example, you know, they gather all our information, uh, of course, even violating our uh, privacy, uh, even, you know, because there's no meaning of privacy today, because if you are engaging with the social media, privacy is already compromised. And that is the reality. And they use the data, apply, analyze and evaluate. They 
pitch the right advertisement uh, in our in our uh, spaces you know what i what what does it mean they have already analyzed us they have already applied evaluated everything you know things are done by the machines uh, intelligent machines they have created so very soon it will be becoming evolution best is now finally create that is the uh, epitome of uh, the the hierarchical structure of uh, bloom's taxonomy the the super uh, the best uh, cognitive skill the create ability to create for a creative mind they create uh, information and knowledge but let's imagine look at the uh, what is happening today i already mentioned a little bit of it age of digitalization is happening we are a global village right now because of our networks, WWW, World Wide Web and Internet has made a global village. And we are digitalized. Every process is getting digitalized. What I mean is that a lot of artificial intelligence is there for the system. So we'll, uh, the, our uh, human environment will be absolutely reduced because the machines, not only uh, robots, for example, or bots in the uh, chat bots, you know, many things are there in the web spaces or digital spaces or virtual spaces which will you know in in future also create things so they, uh, it is also based on a russian study which i mentioned in my papers this is called tris uh, in russian language and they say that just by analyzing millions of patents they can get how uh, uh, creative minds work uh, it's an artificial intelligence to to gather the way the creative minds work and just put them all this information into a 3d printer or a, some kind of analysis tool it will develop, create new designs, which is tailor made to the uh, personal requirements, you know, and it will be absolutely uh, uh, unbeatable creation. And even, uh, you know, the, the art, art space is all uh, controlled today by, uh, by artificial intelligence. The beautiful pictures we see, they are all, most of them are made by machines, you know, by humans. Of course, humans are there a little bit, but at the same time, they have taken over. What I mean is that he's taking over by machines all our cognitive skills. That puts us in a in a real uh, in a corner situation, and this we cannot lose sight of it. Of because you know, as I told you, the Bloom's taxonomy, the revised Bloom's taxonomy, is the cornerstone of the education today. Not only for India, but for the whole world. It defines the curriculum. It defines the assessment. It defines the accreditation. It, it defines the teacher evaluation and everything. I, my dear teachers have put this uh, as a petition in front of the government because you know if you continue uh, with this bloom taxonomy to make all this kind of educational structure we are making a redundant system we should be fully aware of that and we should think about something totally new have represented it in front of the uh, the uh, kasturi rinkan uh, committee who is uh, making the new uh, curriculum framework for india national curriculum framework there, there's a committee a panel installed uh, 3 4 days ago uh, they are thinking about uh, the entire curriculum for India, you know, for uh, uh, child care and uh, school education, higher education, uh, uh, literacy campaigns, and also for adult education. So, therefore, every education space they are going to, then I have told them, hey, just take care. We, are, we shall not, we cannot afford, we cannot afford to continue with the, uh, the revised Bloom's taxonomy based uh, procedures because this, you have to think beyond Bloom's taxonomy. You have to see the emergence of a new type of education, which I call entrepreneurial education. That is the content of this paper. It will be soon published. It is already accepted for publication. It will be published online. You can have a look at it. And uh, this is this con contains what I think and how I think. Uh, it is. I have not thought for others, but I thought for myself as a teacher, as I already mentioned to you. So let us go to the meaning of a. Uh, uh, what I uh, what I mean really mean about uh, this evolution of uh, education, you know, uh, I imagine that's a new new paradigm I'm bringing in. Uh, please take a serious note of it. You know, I put uh, three types of education which could happen today: conventional education, you know, we say less quality education, where the lower order cognitive skills, the lots of RBT revised book taxonomy is taken care of. What are they? We have already said. Remember, understand, apply. Now, if the, an education system which promotes this low order, uh, you know, uh, uh, skills, uh, uh, thinking skills, low order thinking skills of the children uh, or the learners, then we can call it's a conventional system. But you know, the if this particular education take care of uh, higher order thinking skills, which means you know it is to analyze, evaluate, and create. 
we can call this particular education system as quality education. That's a quality education. And you know, the PISA exams, you know, the whole worldwide PISA uh, exams, I hope you're aware of that. This is a global exam. And where which countries are performing in this exam is also clear. Scandinavian countries, Singapore, they are regularly at the top space, uh, occupying the top space in the PISA exams, the worldwide exam. And they, they are conducting today quality education in the sense that the, the what is taught is not just taught to remember, to understand or to apply, uh, rather also to evaluate, uh, you know, um, uh, and uh, uh, analyze, evaluate and to create. So their education is accepted today by the world as a quality education. So because they are taking care of the high order thinking skills. But my dear teachers, I have already mentioned to you, this is not sufficient. Yeah, because, you know, we have to venture to a new space, which is called, I would like to call entrepreneurial education, because the way of the venture is absolutely important. Ability to venture is absolutely important. And that's why what I'm going to uh, explain uh, in this today's uh, uh, session. So there's an emergence of uh, entrepreneurial education. And I've been seeing, foreseeing this uh, years ago. You know, I joined in 2007 in the teaching community or even before 2001, I just had a small session and then I went for research, but then came back 2007. Then I already understood, you know, this is going to be, we are coming to a, a corner. Uh, we are, will be likely to be cornered as a teaching community. So I started thinking and I also made some books already content to be creative, uh, Prasida Ma'am has already mentioned this book. Uh, this is already published in 2019. It's a, uh, allowing people to think creatively in order to, as a preparation for entrepreneurial uh, venture. You know, but uh, two books are in, in, the, uh, in the making. They are Shades of Black and White. This is, uh, 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 this is a tentative title. It's going to be published into, into this year itself, Art of Entrepreneurial Intellection. What, how any entrepreneurial mind should think because you know education is a training of minds training of uh, uh, the mental uh, abilities intellectual training we are imparting so we should know before giving training we should know what kind of uh, under uh, intellection should be suited for the, the modern times and i call that particular type of intellection as entrepreneurial intellection the art of entrepreneurial intellection and shades of uh, black and white and I, I don't go to details of this book uh, because it's going to be published now Another book is already in the store, in the pipeline. This is, uh, again, a pedagogy, uh, which I will be touching upon today a little bit uh, in the, uh, this particular uh, presentation. Now, let me, my dear teachers, uh, uh, draw your attention to what is really happening uh, in the current world. Uh, you know, th this is current world. The modern world is called a VUCA world. Uh, you know, VUCA world uh, is a world of digital natives, I told you the people who are just born into the digital space, uh, you know, the virtual space. Uh, the children born from 2000, uh, uh, 2000 itself, you know, 2001, all these people can be called digital natives because they are readily born into a space which is called a digital space because, you know, they have a, a different worlds, uh, not only real world, they also have a virtual world to live in. And therefore, the, it is also fast changing world. You can, uh, a small observation will be uh, allowing you to uh, understand that. Now, uh, UCA is an acronym, it's not a single word, it's a, a word uh, representing uh, at least four words volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. So these four words together make UCA. And you can read about the VUCA world in later on in detail. But I want to just wanted to tell you this is the description of what is happening today. Volatile. The world is volatile. Fast changing. Turbulent changes are happening in the whole world. You can see how fast our ordinary phones were replaced by smartphones. You can see that, you know, in your lifetime. I, in, for most of you, it happened in your lifetime. How fast things are changing. So we can. It's a volatile world. It's an uncertain world. Uncertain world also means you no. Know, it's not predictable. Uh, I have shown. I wanted to put it on a, a, a two axis. Uh, on the x-axis, I put the quality of information, and on the y-axis, I put the quantity of information, the ubiquity of information. Everywhere, uh, ubiquity means uh, the information everywhere. That's what's happening today. Everywhere you have information, you cannot 
escape information. Information is everywhere. You cannot hide. You cannot also hide information because the truth will be revealed so very fast uh, in this modern times. So quantity of information is very, very high. But uh, what about the quality of information? Causality, it's predictability. Causality means the connection between cause and effect. If you know the connection between cause and effect, we can control the effect controlling the causes. That is the quality of ideas, quality of information. If an idea is having causality, causal connections, it connects cause and effect, and it helps you to manage, to control, and to be on the steering of the processes. But, you know, if a lot of information is there, which are not having sufficient quality, means that, you know, ubiquity of information, but the causal connections or predictability. Predictability is severely damaged because, you know, information is so atomized, so scattered, so diverging, so that it's not, it's not allowing you to take a, a prediction about the future. What if I do this, what will happen tomorrow? What is the impact of my actions? You know, you can actually not predict. That creates a lot of uncertainty. So volatile, turbulent, unpredictable, complex is this today's scenario because, you know, every small thing, you know, it's very complex because we are grown Globally, I've already mentioned to you, globalization has taken place. The age of globalization, it's the age of digitalization. I put it in the center of the, uh, the picture. Age of globalization, age of digitalization. You know, a small uh, butterfly fluttering its wings in Kerala can influence, uh, uh, it can create a, a work, uh, what's called a kind of, uh, you know, uh, wind or a big uh, tornado uh, in uh, Texas in America, for example, you know, I just use a, uh, this is called butterfly effect because, you know, the system is behaving so complex. It cannot really control the system because, you know, a small thing happening somewhere, some part of the world can have a global significance. So it cannot, uh, you know, something happening in Kerala is being spread, sporadically touching the whole globe, you know. That is the scenario. So it's volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. Ambiguous means, you know, <clears> there <throat> could be multiple interpretation of things, you know, and that changes. You, know, you cannot trust something because, you know, if you uh, have to, uh, if you adopt one particular interpretation of the scenario, there's a diverse, uh, diverging or absolutely opposite interpretation is also possible. So there's an ambiguity. So what we should do? How can we handle this book, our world? That is an important question and it's been analyzed and studied in the literature very much. So one of the important suggestions which I would like to follow in this, my old procedures, you know, volatility has to be countered with a vision. Vision should be in turbulence. In, when it, in order to navigate along a, a turbulent sea, the captain of the ship should have a vision, should see things clearly. There should be a polar star guiding the, the path of this ship. So that is called vision, and vision will counter volatility and uncertainty. You know, as I told you, it's unpredictability. So, you know, deeper understanding of things, deeper understanding, deeper understanding, not very far understanding, deeper, deeper learning will help you to overcome this uncertainty of this new world. Complexity, of course, there are a lot of complexities, but, you know, we lose our heart then we see a lot of complexity because, you know, we don't know what exactly to do next. But then we have to gather courage, courage and take one decision and pursue the decision, you'll be right. You know, if you are having a lot of knowledge, you know, you are not able to decide on something. But in modern world, things are happening very quickly. If you are not taking decisions in time, it will be too late. So therefore, we should have courage to take decisions, to manage the VUCA world should have a lot of courage, especially when things are very complex. And now, in the situation of ambiguity, let's see, multiple interpretation simultaneously possible. How you manage it? You have to be flexible. You have to be adaptable. You should be taking only small steps. The, 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 the politics of small steps, you don't take a quantum jump to the future. You change yourself. You are in a position to change. New information coming, you are ready to navigate it. Flexibly. So, <coughs> my dear teachers, the students which we teach are living in a VUCA world. And they can be living this VUCA world, managing this VUCA world, contributing to the VUCA world, being successful in this VUCA world, 
only if they have another vocal vision understanding courage and adaptability so we have to train minds for future to the vocal world which is today also vocal world and tomorrow it will be more vocal so therefore every education process should be able to provide a vision to learners understanding and courage and adaptability so then comes the pedagogy of the digital natives what could be the pedagogy of the digital natives my answer is it should be an entrepreneurial pedagogy why i am saying this i just put all the vision understanding courage and adaptability in brackets right now so because it just describes salient features of a new pedagogy for digital natives because our education process should impart vision understanding courage and adaptability if so how should our education process look like what are the features what are the salient features of our education process should be i call it autonomous learning if you are in imparting self directed and that is the meaning of autonomous the learner is autonomous in learning learner is not taught rather it is learning so that's what is called autonomous learning self directed so therefore every procedure of learning should give space for the learners to autonomously guide the process of learning take mastery be on the steering of the process of learning if teachers are sitting on the steering there is no practice happening you know if the somebody who trains us for driving if he's always putting his hand on the steering you know you will never learn anything you understand because you know the student should learn the driving so the his or her hands should be on the steering not the hands of the teacher the the the, the teacher should be a facilitator of this learning process but it should happen autonomously so any pedagogy i just define a pedagogy today but any pedagogy whatsoever should have this property of autonomous learning the children the learners should be promoted to do the learning autonomously so that they de they develop a vision a direction they know what they are supposed to do in a critical moment in their lives vision and mission that will help them a learned knowledge a knowledge just got from teachers will not be helpful for them because they don't, they don't know whether it is true they have not done it put into practice on themselves my dear teachers this is very important thing and second thing is understanding as i told you this is a response to our world so correspondingly the pedagogy of digital natives will should be promoting lifelong learning continuous learning so there should be some attraction for learning it should not be motivated from characteristic extrinsic motivations it should be motivated from within intrinsic motivation should lead the learning process it should be a lifelong learning will happen only if learning is happening based on the intrinsic motivations of the learner if they just giving from some carrot some promises or some stick some you know some you know which is given by teachers or parents you know don't play but study you know you have to you have to restrict them or promote them with some uh, some gifts this kind of learning will not allow the learners to learn lifelong without lifelong learning there is no future for the learners in the digital spaces or the vocal spaces so i come to the third point that's a very important point that's what i uh, driven me to the entrepreneurial pedagogy it should be venture some the learner should be venturing and to venture means you know an idea the child is developing it should be also implementing making it into a solution or a product or service that is what is called venture sir you should venture with this idea not just learning this idea no earlier in the bloom stacks on we spoke about apply apply is different from venture you know venture means much more uh, important skills are, uh, should be uh, included there and not just uh, creating a, a kind of uh, specified solution or a specified you know as we give in mathematics 1 and 1 plus 1 is 2 you know we know that the answer is known but to venture means answer is not known you have to you have to really test it test your idea and you have to modify your solution modify your product modify your service and gradually eventually eternally forever that is what is called venture some learning 
learning to which helps children learners to put their idea touch their idea and accompany the idea till it becomes a product or service resolution that is what is called ledge of some learning and finally adaptability has to be important and then flexible learning we should not teach us a sage on a stage how they should be just saying that you know, we should be humble enough to say oh this is the information the stand of information today it can change and you have to change also when the new information comes in the major problem for the teachers and learners also is that they are not flexible they are just uh, teaching something which is they have learned not making any improvement they are not ready to change and teachers and uh, generally they said to priests they are not changeable because they have, they have divine uh, commission for the information you know then it's very difficult for them to change but in the modern day teaching should be we should be teaching the new generation in flexible learning now let me also describe say learning entrepreneurial learning ecosystem how to promote this i already mentioned one important thing intrinsic motivation should be based on intrinsic motivation i already told you but now i put three more it should be celebrative learning there will be a lot of celebration happening you know child should not be uh, you know uh, uh, asked to be thinking of itself as a small vain uh, ignorant person it's not like that you know they should celebrate whatever they uh, discover they should discover first and should be celebrating uh, what they discover uh, in the creative communication of what they discover they celebrate they communicate tell the whole world that i have discovered something a lot of self confidence we should impart because you are they are going to live in a very very uh, in a world where they will be forced to uh, see themselves in a in a timid as timid people you know because the, the, the globalization is happening you know you are influenced by, by the globe uh, you cannot escape that influence it's like like gravity you should be always under influence of or magnetic field of earth for example you know you will be always under the influence whether you like it or not you cannot say that i i don't like it and no you cannot say because you are under the influence of gravity and the magnetic field of earth and similarly globalization is a, uh, something happened and you whatever you do you are doing as a global person so you should be able to celebrate it and think positive about yourself uh, think about your own mission consider yourself as an avatar in the world a unique person who is not duped by anybody else so you have a unique mission vision duty you are a avatar you have a avatar lakshya the aim the goal of avatar you know every avatar is having a lakshya there's a purpose dharma samsthapana astaya sambhavami you gave gave you said so there's a purpose for that so this purpose of life this unique skills and values as you know they should be able to learner should be able to celebrate so a celebrative ecosystem is suitable for entrepreneurial learning and secondly gamification you know it's a world of games i don't go to great details you know gamification is a topic in itself i can speak for hours on this i have written written this is papers also on this but you know i just say that it should lead them to play because this intrinsic motivation for every child is to play you don't want to you don't need to tell children to play they will be playing you know you will have to tell them stop play and start start study that's what we say but my dear teachers we should be allowing them to play because there is intrinsic motivation for them but through the play can they learn something that is what is called gamification if you gamify things gamify your ideas you allow your ideas to be gamified you allow the, the learner to uh, gamify the ideas they discover then that shows the mastery they have on this particular uh, uh, discovery or that will allow them to play with others also it will develop team work develop synergy with others these are all important for uh, being successful in a buka world so therefore gamification is another important ecosystem which i would suggest and thirdly networking you know you cannot learn an isolated way as i told you we are under the influence of globalization there's no way to get rid of this globalization so you know that there is a general tendency for the schools stop them from social media of course you have to take care of the privacy and of course you have to take care of many uh, you know you should also be aware of the dangers involved in it but at the same time there is no other way my dear teachers that you allow them to network because networking with all care with all uh, you know security we should be allowing them to network 
at their own levels, you know. And that's very important because they are content to live in a world which is networked. In a networked world, there is no nothing which is, cannot be working without network. So therefore, these are the three important uh, ecosystem. I will tell you how we could do uh, solve this problem a little bit in my own view later on. As I uh, put in the uh, bottom, this is uh, another paper which I, I'm preparing uh, currently uh, how to conduct the, on the conduct of education in a VUCA driven world an introduction to entrepreneurial education. So this is what is the content of this paper. It's only submitted if the peer review, it is, survives the peer review, it will be appearing uh, in the higher education for future. Uh, that's to which I am submitted. So uh, I hope uh, that they will be accepting because it's a very new idea. I am pretty sure about that. At the same time, you know, it may take some time. So uh, as Prasidha uh, has already mentioned to you, I just, uh, we just uh, uh, have uh, copyrighted it and not just to restrict anybody from using it, <clears throat> but rather from uh, restricting people from mutilating it. There's a high chance that people just get uh, some idea and <clears throat> they make it correct and then uh, its uh, impact is all, all gone. That should not happen. It's the only purpose, so it is copyrighted. Uh, it's already granted to us, so therefore that's the uh, information I just want to share. It. Now, my dear teachers, uh, in a few slides, I'll be showing you the, the, the heart of uh, the entrepreneurial pedagogy uh, and uh, how it is satisfying the VUCA requirements. So that's the, this particular slide all about. You know, the education process which you propose in the Parlequinum pedagogy, we call it a Parlequinum pedagogy. My dear teachers, let me, if you have, if I have time, uh, Prasida, ma'am, am I, am I in time? Am I going in time? Uh Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please carry oh. on, sir. Okay. So uh, let me uh, tell you about Parlikudam itself. You know, you may be wondering what is, why I put the Parlikudam. It's a uh, South Indian word. It is very much there in Tamil and also in Malayalam. Uh, uh, why Why this Parlikudam? Uh, I, I was a little bit curious because, you know, in Kerala, for example, uh, both churches and mosques, they are called Parli. Muslim Parli, Christian Parli. So I was just thinking, why, why, why this, you know? Uh, in, only in, in Kerala, uh, nowhere else. Otherwise, it's masjid and uh, church. But Padli is the common word. I made a little bit of research on this particular word, etymology of this word, and I found a wonderful thing. Padli uh, Kudam, this word comes from Pali language, the language of Buddha, Sri Buddha. So in that language, Pali, Padli just means uh, 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 Buddhist monastery. And Kudam is something attached to Buddhist monastery which together it will take a meaning, something attached to the Buddhist monastery. And you know, invariably every Buddhist monastery is attached with schools. And you know, not just any school, it's a very special school for India. You should imagine this belongs to the stream of Nalanda, Tashashila, Wallabi, all these kind of world famous, first global, first universities in the whole world. And this is these were all called uh, universities, but not university in those days, rather something attached to Buddhist monastery, Palikodams. And in the South Indian languages, this word has been uh, there in Tamil. Palikodam does not mean, a, a, not, has nothing to do with the place of worship, it just means school. So that's very clear. So, and in Kerala, maybe it is having some connection with the uh, place of worship because, you know, uh, there's a story that uh, uh, St. Chavara and uh, uh, St. Uh, Bishop Bacinelli, they made a very important uh, path-breaking, uh, you know, declaration. The Catholic Church of Kerala, uh, they wanted to build Pallikudams attached to their churches. So that is why Pallikudam has got that connotation also, something like the church. But the original word does not have any connection. But it stands for a liberative education existed in India, my dear teachers. Which means, I mean, I imagine you are learning this in, uh, in the the history of education of India. If not, this is something has to be had to learn. Uh, as a research, as a part of research, you can do this. Uh, but this is uh, something which I have got from my research, you know. And you know, the Buddhist uh, system, you know, is a totally liberative system in the sense that it was inclusive system. The traditional Indian system was not allowing every caste to learn. For example, only Brahmins were allowed to learn. Kshatriyas may be given some training in archery or some kind of use of weapons or ruling the country, etc. All others were deprived of education. And the vast majority of women, they were not educated at all. 
the earlier. But my dear teachers, please understand, Pallikudam, the Buddhist schools were the only system in ancient India, centuries before Christ, you know, the BC, it goes to BC 600, etc. Our Malanda Tashashila tradition. And there, you know, it was inclusive education, no caste restriction, everybody was allowed to learn. On all, uh, Buddha had some doubts whether they should, uh, he should uh, admit uh, women into uh, the Sangha uh, in the Buddhist monastery. But in, in his lifetime itself, he decided to take them into monastery, which means no, it was a totally inclusive education. It was totally non ritualistic scientific education. It was uh, totally teaching astronomy, medicine, Ayurveda, all these kind of things, the contributions of of uh, Buddhist uh, schools. Today we uh, put it in uh, a real form and say that, you know, it is everything is Indian legacy, but it's not, it was not the truth. And even today, the streams of this uh, caste based exclusivism is there very much in our education system. And therefore, Pallikodam is a liberative stream and modern stream, international stream. You know, even students from Southeast Asia were coming to India to study in this particular uh, university, you should remember. And the people were coming from outside and reporting on this, but uh, what's happening in this, uh, uh, the travelers were uh, coming to India. They were uh, making documents on, or documentary evidences on the existence of this particular system in India. My dear teachers, this is the noblest and open, inclusive, scientific, objective paradigm of education that India has contributed to the whole world. But you know, the history uh, did not do justice to Buddhists. They were all driven out of the India or they are reabsorbed to Hinduism or I don't know what, what happened to them. The, the, the historians should say about that. But we know, see a lot of Buddhism in uh, neighboring countries, not in India. <laughs> but you should remember you know, something has happened. Yeah, what happened is that I leave to the... But you should remember, this is the only vestige of a liberative system, an ancient system of education in India. Which is branded as Pallikudam. Pallikudam in Tamil Nadu. I will refer not to Kerala, rather go to Tamil Nadu and ask about Pallikudam. They will show, this, show a school where every children together sit together and learn. Today, this caste uh, this discrimination is uh, abolished by law. You know that. But even in the south, in the north, uh, the learning costs are not that that uh, happening in, in the way our uh, builders of our fathers of nation really wanted. So, my dear teachers, I just, uh, with a lot of uh, courage, I put this name to this particular pedagogy, the Parlikudam pedagogy, to just to tell the world. And when you read out your uh, your purposes, so Ignal, you also mentioned that it is to just to give education for everybody without any boundaries. That is represented by the word Parlikudam. Let me come to the process of entrepreneurial pedagogy here. You know, there are two uh, way, two uh, uh, levels of uh, process for this the first process is a learning process. I told you the process of education starts with the learning process, not by teaching process. It starts with learning process and it will be complemented by entrepreneurial teaching also. So I just mentioned here only about entrepreneurial learning process because teaching process I just casually mentioned because you know that, that's something which you have to, you have to get trained uh, in a detailed manner. So if I just mention it, it's not sufficient. So let, let's go to the, the learning process of the entrepreneurial uh, pedagogy. I just put uh, five different stages all starting with the, i describe for easiness to remember you know creation stage of creation celebration challenge collaboration campaign you know all starting with c you can say five c's creation celebration challenge collaboration campaign now all these are based on intrinsic motivation of learners that's something which you really remember because you know an education which is just depending on the extrinsic motivation like grades, marks, you know, trophies, all these kind of things it will not sustain the modern world. It will not allow, it will not equip modern children for their VUCA world. And therefore, it is purely based on the intrinsic motivation for learning. What are the intrinsic motivation of learning? Explore. Every child, every learner is having a, a tendency to explore, ask the question why. You can check with children, they will always ask question why without you telling them to ask that. Why? Hey, please ask why question. You need not ask the children to do that. They will ask because that's natural to them. It is intrinsic motivated. When they get some answer, they are curious. They will ask further questions. You know, that is the way. Exploration, my dear teacher, is the intrinsic motivation for learning. And second, communicate. 
to communicate, you know, to tell the world. They have, especially when they have discovered something totally new. You can see the children coming to, to their parents, you know, they have made something on their own. They will invariably coming to the parents and say, oh, I have done it, I have discovered it. Eureka! The word Eureka actually means I have discovered it. It's an uh, yelling out, Eureka, because he has discovered. So it does, it's not age dependent, you know, a, a grand old man like Archimedes also can shout, I have discovered it. That is the communication. That is the intrinsic motivation for life. And third, intrinsic motivation is to grow, especially for children, to expand the horizons, to develop their skills and get the fine, refine the skills. It's not all intrinsic motivation for learners. And fourth, intrinsic motivation is to play. I already mentioned to you, you need not tell children to play. <laughs> you have to tell them to stop play, you know. But we don't want to tell them to stop, stop play. Rather, use the play to learn something. That's what I already mentioned to you. Gamification, I have mentioned to you. And finally, more importantly, my dear, Teachers should under, uh, underestimate it. Every child want to serve, <laughs> you know. And they think that oh, is it true? You know, children want to help in the uh, parents in their family. You know, they want to be counted. Usually, you know, children are not counted. You know, you don't want to count them. <laughs> you know, because they are juniors. You know, they are minors. You don't count them. You know, numbers are not there for them. Half tickets you give at, at the most. You know, but. Children want to assert their position in the community, in the family, in the society. So that's a drive to find their place, do their duties to the community, to the family, to the world. And these are five very important intrinsic motivation will promote learning process. Now, my dear teachers, so creation, you just read it on, on, on the, uh, the, the road. Creation, there's an exploration, is the intrinsic motivation. Now, what does the ch child do in this particular stage of creation, of learning? It's a self, it's a, it's a learner centered and teacher facilitated process. Teachers are there, but not as a on the driving seat or on the steering, but rather behind the steering. You know, <laughs> allowing the child to take the steering. You know, is teaching the the driving. You, know, you can imagine that that uh, that picture. You know, the child is allowed to discover something on its own. An entrepreneurial seed idea, I call it. You know, they have learned some lessons, for example. Now, based on that, they have to take off from what they, what they have learned. It's an airport. What they have learned is like a surface of an airport. But that airport is not just to keep things there. That is to support taking off. The plane should take off from the airport. If the airport is not good for anything, if they, it is not allowing the planes to take off. You know, so whatever we teach normally in schools should be promoting the children to search for an entrepreneurial seed idea, should promote them to take off to a new idea. And my dear teachers, I've told you the VUCA requirement of autonomous learning, developing vision, own vision, Self-driven learning is very important, and this can we can do in the stage of creation. And let's come to the second stage, celebration. Child want to communicate. If they have discovered a very powerful idea, a very interesting idea, useful idea, child want to communicate. So we exploit or we make use of this particular uh, intrinsic motivation to communicate to allow them to celebrate the same idea. No, so we need we need to teach them in the art of communication. And you know, by Gard Howard Gardner's theory. You know, there are eight intelligences, at least eight intelligences in which uh, different children will be thinking. And, you know, they should be promoted to uh, promoted to express themselves, communicate themselves in their native intelligence. That's very important because they have to, uh, to be experts in the communication, in their native intelligence. That is what is called, that is what is happening in the celebration stage. So the child discovers something new, of course, facilitated by teachers. At the same time, now they celebrate and they say, Eureka. What is Eureka? I have discovered it. They tell the world, I have discovered it. They communicate, powerfully communicate, they powerfully pitch the idea in front of the world, world community that I have discovered. That's a celebration that gives a lot of self confidence, a lot of self respect, because I have discovered it is not something which is chewed by teachers and put into my mouth, which I should spit out. That is not the idea. 
whether it is small or big, the idea I have created, I have developed, this my idea, I will love it. Not the idea I got from teachers, I have got it. I have made it my own. I have achieved it. I have discovered. This kind of powerful understanding of self-confidence, self-respect, we should impart to the teacher. I told you, celebrate your ecosystem and lifelong learning, which are VUCA requirements, will be met by this particular uh, aspect of celebration. And third, challenge to grow. To grow is intrinsic motivation. Now, you know, you can use the same idea, the seed idea to develop skills, values, attitudes, talents, set of unique skills. You know, you can promote them to do all these kind of things. The ideas are not just stored in the memory cells of the brain. Rather, they are stored in the body, blood, bones, DNA, the genes of the child. Such a deep learning. How can you do that? You use this idea to improve their skills. Use the ideas to this particular idea. They have discovered that particular idea use to develop their values, attitudes, skills, everything. You know, what is happening here is you now the child is constantly changing. So flexible learning is also happening. Every new idea coming to the child, coming to the learner will change him or her. Which means, you know, it is also uh, learning to adapt itself and being flexible. It's not elastic anymore. You know, I'm a physics teacher also. I hope you know what is meaning of elastic. If you, elastic material, if you, uh, you know, stretch it a little bit, you remove the force, it will be going back. It's restoring force will be there, which will be allowing to return to the original positions, you know. It does not change. Elastic things you cannot change. Only plastic things you can change, like clay. Clay is absolutely plastic. You can mold to any shape. So moldable should be the learners of tomorrow because they are going in a VUCA world. They are going to occupy and live and uh, be successful in a VUCA world. They should be flexible thinkers. So when the, every idea they, uh, the, he or she in, encounters and discovers, starting to modify oneself, one's own attitudes, values, and goals, you know, everything, you know, allowing to grow. That is what we require for the modern times, Nebuka times. Now coming to collaboration, the play, I've already mentioned to you, play is very natural to the children, the innate to the children, native to the children. So now, you know, the very idea they have discovered, we encourage them to convert into a, a game, which they could play with their family, with their parents or siblings, or to their friends, as they grow up, you know, to the community also, to the whole world also, this playful synergy with others. This is absolutely important in the modern world. Because, you know, a child will be able to receive, give and take from the community. If this is not happening, so it's a kind of monarchs. If you are creating monarchs, islands, if you are creating, they will not survive. Because it's a globalized world. In a globalized world, something which cannot be connected with others, Ability to connect is if not there. Ability to synergize with others is not there. It will dry away, wither away. So it should not happen. So my dear teachers, again, the play is a joyous thing like uh, celebration. So therefore, it will promote lifelong learning. I have also told you ecosystem of uh, the new generation learning is gamified learning. It's very, very important. And therefore, to create an ecosystem for learning also. And finally, campaign to serve. You know, let's imagine we have thought, thought out a very powerful idea which we call already entrepreneurial seed idea. Like a seed, it contains a world. You know, every seed, if you put into the earth and give appropriate climate for that, it will sprout and it will become a tree and carry thousand seeds, for example. Now, all these thousand seeds contain trees. So, it's infinity is contained in a seed. It's a, it looks like a very poor and humble seed. But infinity is contained in this particular seed. Now we are unfolding this infinity out of this seed. And this it transforms the seed idea into some prototypes, products, services, and solutions. The idea does not remain in the head to be remembered and to be written in the exam paper. No, idea is something which lives in the person of the learner. And he or she will be regularly producing products, services, and solutions. When your son learning. It is not knowing certain things. It will always, it's not just applying things. It's just uh, 
venturing is i have already mentioned to you venturing is different from just applying an idea to something applying is very easy because you know it's a predictable application but here it's not predictable you have to improvise a lot and that is why it's called venture some learning of course this also will develop a kind of network learning as i told you i i, I, to, I mean this is part of the training program i cannot to tell you in a short time in a training session i will be able to explain to you how network learning could happen i, I will simplify and say you know if you uh, allow the child to be regional and local you know whatever he makes he or she makes will be as a solution or a product or service will be universal that is a, uh, so you can network with whole world whole world i say because the current technology allows networking and we have to make use of the networking uh, facility of today to make the children global citizens you cannot hide them <laughs> uh, they are god citizens netizens we should allow them to to be that so my dear teachers i am coming to last slides now let me just uh, uh, tell you in summary what i have observed or what we have observed you know, our team have observed we have done some pilot we cannot say pilot it's more experimentations with this pedagogy in the whole over india with children and we have gathered some insights already of course this insights has to be has to be uh, uh, polished and uh, better but i just uh, want to tell you to just impress upon you how how it works you can see read from that it creates an ecosystem learning at home that's what we found parents are loving uh, you know to participate in the learning process with child generally uh, parents will be unwillingly participate in the learning process with child because they have better things to do you know because see they have learned it in a i learned it in the first class you know i should i now uh, i have a first year uh, first uh, child learning my child is learning in first class why should i, I it's a waste of time that i sit with them usually parents may think but you know this particular uh, thing so spontaneous and so creative and so imaginative that parents will be it will be catching the imagination of the parents also they will love to sit to, with the children to do this particular learning process and they will also gain insight from this that's one So an ecosystem in families created. You know, generally, children are not supported in learning at homes. You know, at schools you are there as teachers are there to help them. But in a major portion of the time, they uh, spend in in homes, and their homeworks are done in home. And if they are not, uh, you know, uh, uh, facilitated there, you know, if they uh, encounter a, a, a uh, what's called a kind of uh, atmosphere which is not conducive for their learning, their learning uh, outcomes will be reduced. we found this particular learning really increase learning at home because the parents are also uh, challenged uh, by the uh, the way of uh, uh, teaching uh, which are proposing and secondly zero waste it incurs zero waste because everything uh, outcome of this particular learning process is not waste rather learning relic we call because we are invariably invariably found that the parents are keeping the learning outcomes of the children some product service or solutions in the major places in the family the visiting uh, room if they are big house or if say slum area that would be their gods etc here it's never like it becomes learning relics you have to create not waste as teachers we are not supposed to create waste rather learning relics if you have a vision we'll be able to make learning relics out of a simplest learning let it be a kindergarten learning or learning in the preschools you can create if you have a vision can create re- learning relics not just ways so this particular pedagogy creates you know most part of it is a learning relic not waste thirdly it relies on pure i have already mentioned intrinsic motivational learners i have already mentioned i don't repeat it it purely depends on the intrinsic motivational learners and next it banks on local and natural resources now we want to say as you know uh, the policy of ignow you already mentioned in the beginning it is to take the quality education to masses to every child no child should be deprived no caste system here nothing even economic financial uh, you know uh, levels social classes should not restrict a, a, a child to learn something the best education should be given to the the least poorest to the poor should get the best education if you are giving them very uh, conventional education or even quality education it will not help them so we are putting again creating a vicious circle for them which they cannot break so rather we give under poorly education the poorest to the poor let them come out of their their destiny 
come out of their from the vicious circle, let them break. So in this particular purpose, Igno and our organization, my organization really have one mind. I understand if I have understood you correctly. And now it limits the digital dependence and digital divide. I tell you a story. This not a story. So what's happened? You know, we could uh, connect to the remotest uh, tribal village of uh, Nagaland. Chasor is the name of the village. Children were participating in this program. There's no network, there's no mobile phone. How it worked is a story in itself. I will not narrate that, but it was possible. And you know, digital dependence, the screen time is very much today because every class are uh, children are sitting in front of the computer or uh, mobile phone and their eyes are gone, the health is gone, lifestyle is different, their moods are changing, you know, all these kind of complaints we have. But this particular pedagogy does not allow the children to sit in front of the uh, computer. They just take down the task of the day. They implement it the nature with the family. <laughs> Normal education process will take place. And in the evening, maybe they come and report. That's all. Only two times the connections, connectivity is required to take out the task and to just to support or, or submit the report. So digital divide is also gone. You know, should imagine how cruel we were to the poor children of the country. It is said that you know, at least one third of children were deprived of education in the last two years or one and uh, more than one and a half years, you know, because they don't have network, no devices. How can they learn? Nobody's caring, you know. It's a tragedy. It's a tragedy happening to India. But, you know, no governments, I don't know. It's, of course, they, some governments try to do something, but it's a, it's, a, it's a drop in the big ocean of the problem, you know. It's not a solution. You have to really solve the problem intelligently maybe adopting this kind of pedagogies, which require limited resources, digital dependence is less digitally wide as well, does not promote. And finally, my dear teachers, look at this final point, it permeates entrepreneurial spirit to the families. You know, you have heard about a lot of uh, suicides, especially by farmers, you know, they are finding either wits end, and there's no, no way out, they, they commit suicide, you know. That's so depressive country. India is getting a, becoming a very depressive country. But you know, when the children are learning in the entrepreneurial way, they create some solution, they create some product, they create something new, which they can keep with gods and keep in the reception, etc. It permeates a kind of entrepreneurial spirit to the family members. They also think about solving their own problems, family problems in an entrepreneurial way. Entrepreneurial spirit, the hope, joy is restored in the family. And my dear, uh, teachers this particular education we don't want to keep in the schools at the, you know, to start with rather at families the reason is the first and last point you know it creates an ecosystem in the family and creates a kind of entrepreneurial spirit allows the entrepreneurial spirit to overflow uh, or permeate to the families these are absolutely important thing for our nation and therefore we want to we have pledged to take this to homes uh, first and now, uh, my dear uh, teachers, this is my last slide, or maybe some, one more slide to speak about ourselves. Otherwise, this is the last slide. You know, this is a national mission. That's what I have. Uh, the ma'am has uh, um, already mentioned that I, I'm in a, on a mission board, or we are on a mission board. Let me tell you what is the mission. You know, this is a national entrepreneurial education mission. We have to change. And we, we have to change because, you know, conventional education is not sufficient. Even quality education is not sufficient. I have already shown entrepreneurial education may be a solution and possibly, most possibly a solution because it's having a correlation with the, the problem. It can solve the problem. It can solve the problems of Uka world. And therefore, uh, you know that new curriculum framework is being made, NCRT is being restructured. Kasturi Renkan, Dr. Kasturi Renkan is the person uh, in charge of making this NCF new uh, national curriculum framework. And I have spoken to him, he's very much uh, appreciating it. I have spoken to in CRT, uh, I have spoken to uh, AACT, uh, I have spoken to the largest board of the country, uh, CBSC, etc. I, I could have shown a video, but I don't do that because of the time limitation. Uh, our discussion made into a video, so I could have shown. But I don't do that. Rather, just believe that this is a, a need of the nation. If you, if at all you make a new curriculum framework for India, it should be based on the entrepreneurial uh, pedagogy. Very people like pedagogy. That people also invent other pedagogy. I have no problem about it. I don't want to, uh, this to be mutilated. That's all I, what I want. But at the same time, you know, let new things, new insights come in. And you know, you are all teachers or teacher trainers. I need your support to conduct this mission. So this is not a class I'm taking. This is an introduction to a mission I'm giving 
you. So let's convert. And my, my program is very simple, very, very simple. Let me tell you in the simplest words. You know, currently the NCRT uh, curriculum is there. Now if it is replaced, we think about new uh, framework. But every chapter of the NCRT uh, curriculum, textbooks will be attached with a entrepreneurial home activity, which will be uh, based on the entrepreneurial pedagogy, which was, I was mentioning. So that the children will be at the end of the classes, you know, they will have to do as an assignment, home assignment, home activity, home event, we call it. Because it is having a power to become an event, important, important happening, you know, in the family. And it is the most important happening in the family. We have observed it. And of course, you have to implement it uh, and to get fine tuned enough feed feedbacks and give a repository for the whole country. We can give free of cost. Every child will be able to get homeworks free of cost. But at the same time, my dear teachers, uh, you should know, I'm introducing, this is my last slide, introducing the, uh, our, our organization, this is called Rajkri Media Trust, a non-profit organization. We are a non-profit organization. We cannot earn money for ourselves. We can earn money only for the future uh, of our institution. That's the way it is designed. It's already established to, to 2013, so some seven, eight years ago. And the production services, you know, you can see the Pallikudam, the education observer, smart boards and Pallikudam publications. These are the information ecosystem for our whole program. Pallikudam is a Pallikudam uh, education observer, it's a magazine and smart boards, these are, they are all weeklies, online weeklies, freely available on the website www.pallikudam.com, it's freely available. And Pallikudam publications publishing suitable books for new generation. Uh, uh, supporting new generation education, entrepreneurial education. So these three are the, the ecosystem, information ecosystem for our program. Now you can see in the left, Palikudam High School. This is through which we want to promote this particular uh, learning process, new learning process. Playmate, companion, friend, and mentor. These are four classrooms arranged according to uh, the NEP 2020. In a, according to NEP 2020, there will be a foundational uh, level, foundational stage, a preparatory stage, a, a kind of middle stage and a secondary stage. So corresponding to the foundation stage, we have playmate and corresponding to the preparatory stage companion, corresponding to the middle level, you have friend and finally with the secondary level, we have mentor. And these are, this is the ecosystem that is the heart of this, heart of our program. You know, we need teachers, we need uh, you know, volunteers to develop all these kind of materials. We are ready to give uh, training for the teachers also. That is the heart. And finally, we'll, uh, we are conducting our events. You know, round table is an event which will be uh, helping uh, policy making in education. We have a portal where different stakeholders of education. It's a complete portal for education stakeholders, you know, for parents, teachers, students. You know, they can all congregate and meet and see each other. That's the platform. And polygon projects are there. Polygon awards are also uh, there. Something new I want to announce today. You know, this is the first teacher training program we are conducting to. Uh, don't get uh, uh, embarrassed about it. I'm, you know, you must see the money attached there. Uh, don't get uh, worried about that because this is the money which I want to also partly give to the teachers. You know, who will give this kind of uh, program. You know, conduct this program. So teachers are to be trained so that they can uh, join us in conducting this program. So you, your teachers and teacher trainers, your teachers and teach, would be teachers and teacher trainers, you know, you can make use of this opportunity. Of course, training yourself as teacher, uh, uh, you know, I have mentioned everything there. Special offers are also mentioned. You know, this is just to uh, take this uh, this pro program forward. So I uh, we look forward to an entrepreneurial transformation education and welcome to pioneer a paradigm shift. This uh, every uh, single uh, uh, the uh, student of education and the teachers of education are welcome to, part, to partner with us to develop this kind of, uh, we, we, we are a team, we are making uh, a nation, we are contributing to nation building, let's make an entrepreneurial transformation of education. Thank you so much. This is what I want to uh, tell you. And uh, uh, I don't know whether it is understood by everybody, you can also ask questions as, uh, as maybe Prasida Ma'am can take over from here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for your wonderful session. I must say uh, you have uh, really explained uh, all the uh, pr uh, principles of entrepreneurial education 
and uh, uh, your uh, session has been very informative now i would like to um, uh, request our regional director dr js dorathy madam to ki kindly come uh, and kindly address uh, all learners and the resource person ma'am thank you ma'am at the outset i place on record our gratitude from the new regional center kochi uh, to uh, the resource person for uh, sparing the time and the key word which uh, linked uh, the open and distance learning system uh, the uh, the conventional education system and is the lifelong learning i should say so uh, which was also covered and touched upon and certain case studies which he was sharing in between uh, as to support his views especially in the model he has put forth uh, it was quite interesting and uh, uh, sir was telling or was also highlighting uh, friends that uh, learning is more important than teaching so uh, i mean we have heard about success stories of uh, uh, even our own uh, what to say stakeholders in india sitting under the uh, street light and studying so what makes us to study and what uh, what are the spin off benefits which will give uh, when we study all depends first on the initiative we take to study i should say so if if at all any one of you are still interested to en enroll into any of the programs of igno today is the last day i should say and uh, please be benefited and um, as part of all the uh, innovation club activity we have two more sessions one is this grievance redressal and a small information about swayam why we always talk about swayam is uh, cochin regional center there are three uh, national faculty for the swayam portal and uh, also uh, the regional center vadodara has been uh, the regional director of priyam rajesh has been the principal investigator for this swayam course also so what is this swayam actually actually you know it's all small ma massive online open course available for anyone to study and the difference between any other uh, program where we enroll and this uh, swayam enrollment is that we need only uh, your email id and there is no need to pay the fees at the time of enrollment so you study the course content you get access to the course content and if you are willing to write the exam and you are prepared to write the exam you can always pay the fee and write the exam so that is what and there are many of the igno programs are also in the uh, swayam portal this with the topic i will be getting across the uh, email i mean sorry the website of swayam portal also for your use and with this uh the enrichment session and the swayam information is also uh, over and now we are over to um any grievance or uh, any redressal mechanism friends and we are also aware that today's batch is mainly people who have already completed because it was related to education see when it comes to entrepreneurial opportunities Uh, or transformation of the conduct of teaching he was uh, talking isn't it in india and beyond i think the first benefit will go only to uh, all of us as educationists so uh, that's why we are called so if you have not applied for any of the convocation degree or have not completed part of the program please feel free to ask your queries we will be here to help you out and if there are no queries then we will be winding up because uh, from 10:30 we have all of us all together uh, friends and also always in innovation club activity just to enhance your soft skill soft skill see first uh, is how we we can speak in a, a virtual media we expect at least two learners to thank the resource person you should know when you are thanking a resource person you should know the name the topic and also what you have drawn from it and for your information the shortcut to know the topic and the resource person is in the message column of this virtual meeting so if you open your uh, message column 
you will be able to know. So I will request at least two people, please be mentally prepared to, among the participants to thank the resource person. See, more than any other award, no, the, uh, a small appreciation from uh, one of the participants will always take the, uh, what is it, pleasant memories for the resource person. That's what. So even though sir has been very kind enough to spare his time, and on behalf of Vignu and all of us here, once again, I place on records uh, to uh, Professor Varghese for uh, sparing his time to be with us and to share about uh, such a wonderful topic and it's a new topic also. And certain models which you have shared will be really revisited again. And we will be uploading this information in the YouTube channel of the uh, Indragami National Community Regional Center coaching also. Uh, and uh, many will be benefited. So with this, I will open the session for grievance and two, uh, I will request once again two participants to thank sir at the end of the meeting. Please. Thank you. Thank you, Dorothy, madam, for your kind words. Uh, Rajesh, sir, is there with us uh, in this session. I'm so glad, sir, you have joined for the session out of your busy schedule, sir. Uh, sir, if you would like to say something about the session and interact with our resource person for today, uh, sir, please, sir. Uh, thank you, Prasida, madam. Uh, thank you for uh, first and for, foremost inviting me to this session. I hope I am audible. Yes, sir, you are audible, sir. Okay, oh, fine. Um, uh, 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 Dorothy, madam, uh, uh, Sindhu, madam, Prasita, madam, and uh, all my um, uh, uh, Jalja Umari, madam, and all my other colleagues at uh, IGNO uh, Regional Center, uh, Kuchin. Uh, it is, uh, all, as always, a pleasure to join you on any program, whether it is on the offline or the online platform. And um, I have been so closely associated with that Regional Center for uh, such a long time. So it is always uh, a pleasure uh, for me to join any program uh, hosted by IGNO Regional Center, Kuchin. Uh, uh, first and foremost, I would uh, once again thank you all for uh, inviting me to this program uh, to share my uh, humble views. I'm sorry that I uh, joined a bit late due to certain preoccupations. So um, I uh, missed, uh, somehow missed the initial parts of this very uh, wonderful lecture delivered by Vargi sir. Uh, in fact, uh, um, I, I joined when the slides were being explained, especially the five, five point slide which uh, sir was explaining so eloquently. Uh, sir, first, of, uh, first and formal, uh, foremost, let me congratulate you for uh, the wonderful uh, uh, presentation. Uh, it was an eye-opener for me on uh, many of the counts. And uh, secondly, uh, it is also a way forward as far as the new educational system is concerned because uh, uh, learner involvement and teacher involvement has to be increased to a substantial level as far as uh, any educational institution is concerned and uh, uh, not less as far as IGNO is concerned as well. Um, uh, what uh, in fact attracted me uh, thoroughly to this uh, particular presentation was the kind of model that was being presented. There were uh, certain highlights of the model which were uh, not touched upon by many other speakers in various other fora. And uh, this will definitely help the learners as well as the parents and of course the teachers as well. Uh, throughout the country. So I hope uh, you can take it forward as a national mission and uh, take it um, uh, to its logical conclusion uh, across the country because uh, not only Kerala needs to benefit from this, but the whole country needs to benefit from such an initiative. And the uh, pathway that you have presented is uh, really brilliant and really very, very effective as far as uh, the whole scheme is concerned. Uh, uh, from my uh, perspective, I would just uh, uh, like to highlight a couple of points. Of course, uh, you can uh, respond to it. Uh, one of the points is that uh, you have uh, talked about the, the involvement of uh, parents and the guardians, for that matter, in the uh, study process of the learners. Now, uh, what I find practically happening in many of the cases, especially uh, once the uh, COVID scenario has unfurled, is that uh, since we all have mostly nuclear families, uh, the uh, level and extent of uh, parental involvement in the teaching learning processes of their children is abysmally low. Uh, this is uh, the, true of the case where um, uh, both the parents are working. Uh, they have minimal time to spend with their uh, children. 
and secondly also in such cases where the parents may not be too well educated to participate in the educational process even like uh, when it comes to the 7th or 8th standard uh, if you uh, practically look at it even though the parent may have studied till say uh, graduation maybe 40 years back or 30 years or 12 years back for that matter uh, he may have uh, forgotten most of it of course you can take it as an opportunity to recap upon the, uh, those points but many parents actually find it difficult to do so and when it comes to higher classes maybe 11th or 12th uh, as, uh, especially with regard to the science courses the level of involvement of uh, the parents uh, is a difficult proposition uh in many cases that's what uh, i have practically seen in uh, many of the issues uh, but uh, maybe uh, that's my personal opinion but uh, apart from that even where the parents are uh, quote unquote knowledgeable there is this issue that uh, due to their uh, absence from the uh, scheme of studies or the scene of study of the learners concerned uh, this kind of an involvement hardly takes place and secondly another thing that uh, we have practically exp uh, exper uh, experimented at uh, regional center kochin uh, when i was there uh, this is not about the swayam course that we are running but uh, earlier we had tried to make the digital components more interactive especially the gamification part of course it has its own limitations but still uh, using the mod model and certain plugins and certain um, uh, certain uh, modifications from our part we used to gamify many of the uh, chapters or many of the uh, learning events so as to suit the uh, acumen of the learners so uh, i felt that uh, what we could see was that within a short span of time uh, with the maximum attention span even the digital tools could aid in the uh, teaching learning process uh, and become an effective component of the practical uh, aspects that you are talking about like uh, uh, creativity celebration because once um, uh, one of the major advantages of a gaming module in the digital form is that it gives instant gratification to the learner like uh, a star for instance once a, a certain stage has been attained by a learner on the digital module he gets a star or a badge so that acts as a motivation and it uh, helps him explore both offline as well as online and therefore and uh, thirdly the collaborative aspect as far as uh, online mechanisms today are concerned it enables a lot of collaboration seamlessly once you complete a certain module online you can collaborate either online or offline online collaboration is much more easier today so that also helps the le teaching learning process and um, and the entrepreneurial aspect i feel is also uh, much more heightened by a judicious uh, mixture of offline and online components especially the gaming, gaming component so um, uh, from my perspective it is like uh, a 50 50 avenue if you can effectively incorporate the um, gaming and other uh, digital components within the pallikodam model that uh, you are way also correctly presenting uh, to the audience i think that would be a greater uh, that would lead to a greater degree of success i wish you all the best sir these were these were my very humble suggestions and comments Uh, if you could kindly respond, I, I shall be yeah. grateful. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Rajesh sir. I mean, we don't know each other, but I, 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 I follow. I would have wished, wished that you have seen uh, my uh, earlier slides also, because we are trying to make a total transformation, not just a uh, patch, patchwork for the existing system. Uh, I, I let me tell you that uh, with a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of faithness, because you know we cannot. we cannot modify existing system to make it right that's what, that's what that was my uh, first two three slides you know because you know it is outdated it outdated i just tell you it is we have to venture beyond the revised rules taxonomy that's what i'm telling uh, this is not heard even in the scandinavian countries it is heard in india right now from me i'm telling you that you know the reason is i have already mentioned many aspects of the cognitive skills which we are proud of uh, in the bloom's taxonomy for example understand the the uh, you know, remembering understanding applying you know analyzing evaluating creating these are all become uh, uh, you know what is called a evolutionary vestige of the uh, process of learning that's what i presented in the first two slides 
since you have missed that slide, uh, you know, I'm not trying to make a patchwork of different things and uh, correct the scenario. Rather, I, I'm proposing a new scenario altogether where the children are purely driven by their intrinsic motivations for learning. The purpose is also shown in the previous slides. They are, have to live in a VUCA world, a world of volatility and uncertainty, complexity and uh, ambiguity. There's no option for them. The learning should be completely self-directed, autonomous, and it has to be lifelong. It has to be venturesome. It has to be flexible. There's no other way for children to perform. If, they, if we want our learners to be successful in the current and coming uh, uh, era, there's no other way. So therefore, we are opening ourselves to reality. I'm not speaking about uh, uh, different modes of education. Modes are, in, uh, I, I, I don't know, uh, that is not in my perspective at all. It could be any mode. I'm not concerned about that. I'm speaking about the pedagogy, the content, the, the way it has to be taught. That is my priority. The reason is very simple. I also stressed the family atmosphere. I know, I know that the families are really struggling to make time for children. And that is the reason I propose it. That is an interesting thing. You know, since they have, do not have much time, they can only have quality time in the family for the children. And the quality time is determined whether they, whether the learning process can ignite their curiosity also. I'm speaking about parents. I'm speaking about other uh, members of the family. If it can catch their imagination, they will willingly participate because they will understand that this is something entrepreneurial. Entrepreneurial just means that is something out of the box. <laughs> they have not thought about it. You know, it should appear in front of them as a totally new event. I can give you examples, you know, uh, later on in the training program. It's an introductory program because I cannot put everything here. But, you know, in fact, every parent will think that this I have heard for the first time. In my lifetime, I have not seen. So they will be willingly participating. That is the way we design our program because it's based on a very creative new idea which we call entrepreneurial seed idea entrepreneurial seed idea and the process of learning is to make this entrepreneurial seed idea to realize it as a solution or a problem or, or a product or a uh, service for the family to start with they are not they are creating the family uh, they are solving together child and, and the parents and the other members of the family sit together solve a problem of the family you understand that kind of learning is totally new in the family and whatever time they have i know that they are starving for time but at the same time, whatever time they have will be made into a quality time. The engagement with the children, engagement, uh, willing participation of parents with the, in the learning process of the child will be not only uh, helping children, it will be helping themselves. It will help them to absorb, imbibe a kind of entrepreneurial spirit for the family. It will be family making thing. You know, I've already put in the uh, uh, many properties of this uh, thing. It will be uh, allowing to solve the problems of the family. It will be creating a, it permeating a wonderful spirit to the family, joy to the family, and happiness to the family. We have seen it with our ha eyes, you know, how it is working in the family. That we have seen. So therefore, I have no doubt about it. Of course, I know parents are starving for time. This is for sure. Uh, this is the case, and I don't uh, uh, argue with you. That's the, I experience. You experience. Everybody experience. I got. But what I'm trying to do is to make the time available time and quality time so that whatever time the parent invests in children's learning, in, give them a lot of wonderful ideas for themselves. And not only that, they are solving some problem of the family together. That is the way we are teaching. We are not teaching what is in the textbook. We are teaching something totally new. We are teaching them entrepreneurial spirit, entrepreneurial seed idea, which the child discovers. We don't take the, I've told you, uh, I've told in the class, you are, you are not there of all time. It's, we are making a kind of airport uh, through our teaching at school. And what is the purpose of airport? To allow the planes to take off. <laughs> you know, it's not remain there. You know, it should support the children to taking off from this airport to new destinations. That is what we are doing in this uh, uh, new pedagogy altogether. And therefore, I will ask you to uh, watch the previous slides also because that contains a lot of new insights. Uh, an enlightened person like you will be finding. I imagine I, I'm, uh, it came like an enlightenment for me. And I imagine that you, as a creative mind, you will be also finding it really, really interesting. We are not trying to patchwork, We're trying to uh, correct some errors happening in the system. Rather, I want to make a paradigm shift. Because it is time for a paradigm shift. There's no nothing to repair. You know, we cannot repair. 
we have to go for a new thing and that new thing is in front of us uh, let's make also a different i have no problem that anybody else make uh, new things but you know we cannot avoid uka reality the reality in front of us we cannot avoid we cannot avoid that redundancy of the uh, revised books taxonomy we cannot match up because it's made in 2001 right now it is 20 years uh, we have uh, traveled from 2001 to 2021 and therefore we cannot just say that uh, we don't do not need a paradigm shift the problem with the system which i find is that we are trying to teach something very old which is uh, revised books taxonomy is very old you should uh, acknowledge that and if you are using that again to repair uh, many things that is a blunder we could do i have spoken this to uh, the chairman of the act ncrt even the dr kasturi rengan who is appointed as the uh, the chairman of the national curriculum framework based on the nep 2020 so they are agreeing with me i hope they will be agreeing with me they have to agree with me because not with me not with me i not a person i am not representing a person i am representing an idea and this idea is very much in front of us and we are opening our eyes and see that that idea that's what i want to because you are also teaching the training the teachers i i thought and that's why i spend my time also because with teachers i should tell the teachers you know otherwise we will be also becoming redundant as teachers you know <laughs> who teach students who want to learn from us you know, all lessons which is available by by you saps or other in a most decorative way they get all this information you know <laughs> pays little money and why should they pay a lot of money to schools and uh, the, our system to learn that's the same thing so we have to also find a new avenues for teachers you know it's also a survival uh, instinct which promotes me i'm also a teacher if you are not doing this kind of uh, survival, survival act we will be also getting redundant and it will be the end of our career also you know the new uh, gen- generation technologies are putting into many careers and uh, a teachers career is not uh, not a sacred career which will not be attacked or, or uh, we cannot be replaced by uh, uh, own technologies i imagine you also make mooc you know that's again replacing teachers you know <laughs> large number of teachers to one good teacher you are doing that you know so if you don't find ours as a new space for teachers we'll be also redundant in the wuka world wuka world everything will be redundant very fast so we have to be very careful we are watchful and also visionaries uh, in our own way because otherwise this is a matter of survival for teacher uh, the, the teaching profession as such that's my response thanks thank you sir thank you uh, thank you for your very fine response and i'm uh, sure that it will help all of us and all, all the best for your uh, uh, plan sir thank you sir. i i want you <laughs> with me <laughs> together surely <laughs> surely, surely uh, we are all with you and uh, what our kind of uh, uh, collaborate uh, uh, joint work that you uh, wish to do with us kindly let us know yeah thank you sir okay. thank you thank you so much sir thank you rajesh sir for your <laughs> comments and views on the topic sir and thank you vargis sir also for responding to rajesh sir uh may i would also like to invite other uh, some of uh, some of the persons who are there in the session and uh, i think dr sibu is there dr sibu are you audible in case other uh, other Bye. students or who, who sibu sibu sir are you there yes sir i'm here i was uh, going yeah, yeah. through the I go uh, going through the lecture i heard rajesh also uh, it was yes, a wonderful session yes, uh, but in between i was busy, busy with something else that's why i could not listen to the whole session today but the idea that was proposed by vargis was really good and what i felt really was that he was telling about the bloom's um, taxonomy the revision of bloom's taxonomy and the lower order thinking skills nowadays uh, the trend is that we are all focusing on to the higher order thinking skills and we are mostly uh, focusing on to the things that children or the students who come forward they should get the higher order thinking skills at the same time we are not focusing on to the lower order thinking skills so I was focusing on his uh, talk that the lower order thinking skills also have certain uh, critical or crucial role to play and i just want a clarification on that that uh, uh, the theme is implemented in the schools and it is being uh, proposed for the higher higher level also so what is the real idea behind it and what is the thing that uh, makes you feel that the idea of entrepreneurship education has to begin from the home because it was being very clearly spelled out that 
the entrepreneurial education has to come from home that means the students have to take their activities to the home and the people at home the parents or whoever is there they have to support it and through supporting the children they have to gain the idea of entrepreneurship uh, that that is a crux that i came to understand and how yes. far it will go with the higher education that is my question the idea is uh, we have to think about the lower order thinking skill then we have to focus on to uh, the children uh, who have to take their idea to the, school, uh, the to their home and from their idea the parents or the uh, elders have to come forward or know about it and come forward with the entrepreneur skills is that the idea and what is the uh, real crux behind it how ca- how far we can take it to the higher education thank you sir yeah. Dr. Sipu, uh, again, I, I, I don't know whether you uh, uh, heard me, uh, my earlier slides. Does not matter. I can explain it once again. This is a paper I have already published in higher education. Uh, uh, you know, to, uh, I have already shown the, my paper. Uh, it, it will be coming out very soon. You know, uh, in the in that particular publication. And uh, uh, you know, I just tell there that we have to go beyond the Bloom's taxonomy. And, you know, those that education which focuses on the law or a free lower order uh, thinking skills, lots. That is what is uh, uh, which I wanted to call conventional education. It's happening in many schools. It's important, but at the same time, it's a it's a kind of evolutionary vestige. I call it evolutionary vestige means you know, many uh, gadgets are there to support this kind of processes. You know, cognitive skills. For example, to remember. You, know, you had a lot of memory uh, devices today. It was not the case when the uh, olden days, you know, when there was no, no even uh, no printing is av- was available. So to uh, to con- consolidate, to store the information, there was nothing available. But today it is not the case. Therefore, it's very important, but at the same time, not sufficient for modern time. To develop the lower order skill is necessary, but not sufficient. That is the way I present it in the that particular paper. That. Paper will be available in the public uh, later on, so you can read it and uh, really under, uh, uh, understand what I, I think. And second level, you know, it's a high, higher order thinking quotes we call. You know, they are, you know, the uh, process of uh, apply, apply, uh, application is also there. Evaluation, uh, you know, uh, analysis, evaluation, create. Even that is being uh, hijacked by machines, intelligent machines. So that is what I, I'm telling. And therefore, there's no space for us. If you just remain with the Revised Bloom's taxonomy, which is made in 2001, there's no chance for us as teachers or as students. That is my statement. You know, we have to think, we have to venture beyond Bloom's taxonomy, revised Bloom's taxonomy, I mean, because it's made in 2001, at the very beginning of this uh, digital uh, processes happening, 20 years ago, 20 years in current uh, times is great time. The, the paradigms have gone and shifted. And so I uh, propose a paradigm shift, not a repair for the existing system. Uh, that is also the reason why I want, don't want to touch the schools. Of course, teachers have to prepare all these kind of things, but at the same time, it is not confined to schools. I want to take it to, to homes so that, uh, you know, this is the new space for us. We have to create an ecosystem for the family also, because most of the time children are living in, in the, with their families, especially in the COVID times, you know, they were always living with them. Uh, that's the main preoccupation. But at the same time, you know, I found that there's a beautiful uh, reason for that, which I already mentioned to Rajasar, that, you know, the families, the parents are starving for time. They have only quality time. When they encounter, when they engage with something entrepreneurial, that's something absolutely new and novel. They don't feel that this is something which I've studied in first class and fifth class. I'm not able to do that. That also does not come because, you know, these entrepreneurial ideas are made by children. All by themselves, of course, very facilitated by teachers. I could have given you a very concrete example, but I found the time is too uh, short for that. It, it's part of the training programs which we want to provide later on. Uh, but at the same time, uh, please understand, try to understand the time of revised taxonomy is over. It's outdated. That's my statement. Outdated because I don't say it is because these cognitive, cognitive skills are not important. Not because of that. It is not sufficient. That is reason. It is necessary, but not sufficient. New generation children are supposed to live in a VUCA world, a volatile, uncertain, complex, and 
you know, what's called uh, ambiguous world. There, things are changing so fast. They respond to things so fast. They should be super intelligent to do that. And so, you know, that is not su supported by the Bloom's revised Bloom's taxonomy of 2001. We have to devise something new. And that something new is what I call entrepreneurial pedagogy, something totally new, which allow them to, or if you watch the presentation, I think most of your doubts will be cleared. That's my thinking. But there is a paper already uh, accepted for publication. They will be publishing shortly. So you can watch over that also. And if you have further doubts, I can clear that. I'm convinced uh, in what I say. And basically, I'm a teacher of higher education. Uh, I'm not a teacher of. Uh, I never taught in the lower classes. I taught, I'm teaching engineers right now at Rajivy School of Engineering Technology. Uh, so I'm also practicing it here uh, with the higher education uh, students because I know clearly that I'm they're living. I'm 17 years, uh, 15 years I'm teaching them. I know what is happening to their career, you know. And then I know that this is the way. They have to be entrepreneurially gifted. Their mental structure should be entrepreneurially uh, changed, transformed. Only then they will be able to capture even the career, the good career. If they want to get into, they have to be entrepreneurial all by themselves. That is the reason uh, why I insist not only for lower education, not only even for kindergarten, I start, you know, uh, but not only I'm not stopping at pre university level, I'm going to the higher education level also. I'm in discussion with the ACT also uh, in this regard because they have to also change. The teaching process of the higher education has also to change. Teacher education also has to change. That's my faith and that's my belief. And that's my vision, vision we have already formed. And then I courageously tell that because my experience, all my experience uh, with the, uh, this uh, type of new pedagogy is positive. Of course, I'm open for criticism. That's why I also asked for a, a research. We have to do research also because it's a new thing. And nobody has told uh, about this in the whole world. I imagine, why don't we start uh, something new in our country? We are uh, claiming ourselves to be the you know, the teacher of the whole world. And we were that uh, in the Nalanda and the Krishila times, we were the teacher of the whole world. And now we have to be teacher of the whole world, of course, giving a new, uh, we don't, uh, uh, you know, try to maintain or try to correct something which is already outdated. Uh, what, I, what, I, what I call already outdated is revised proof taxonomy. I know pretty sure when I say all our curric curricular process or assessments or teacher assessments, accreditations are all built upon the revised proof taxonomy. I know that. I'm, I'm also participating in the, the institution building. So I know that the, even accreditation is uh, built on this. But same time, it's very high time that we have to correct it. If you don't do that at this point of time, we're doing a lot of injustice to our learners which will not be preparing them for the new world, which we can clearly see as a VUCA world. That's my answer as of now, uh, Dr. Sibu. Thank you, for, uh, thank you, sir, for the uh, real clarification. And uh, all the best for your venture. Uh, let the things come forward. Let's not go for the shift. Let's come forward to something new, as you are telling. All the yeah. best to the venture. All the best. Yeah, all the best. I want you also with me. <laughs> That's right. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. whatever I can do, I'll help you. I'll be with you. Good. No, I want and research. You know, I want a lot more research. I thought, you know, because that's very important. Yeah, whatever opportunity is there, we'll collaborate and do yeah, it. Sir. Definitely. Sure. Thank you. I know you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sibu, and thank you, sir, for responding to Dr. Sibu's queries. In fact, the session could be possible only because uh, Dr. Sibu connected me with yeah, <laughs> Professor really. Varkis. So I'm really thankful to Sibu, sir, uh, for connecting me with Dr. Varkis. It all happened like that. You know, it's not pre-planned. <laughs> yeah, 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 sir. So I should be thankful to Sibu as well, sir. And thank you so much, Varkis, sir, for the clarification given. I, I assume that this is a world of Bukka, world of digital nature. Is as Sir rightly uh, said, and we need. We are. I think we are going for a huge uh, paradigm shift now in education, as well as entrepreneurial education is concerned. Uh, so I leave this floor open, Sir. Uh, I think Elizabeth, uh, ma'am, are you? Yes, yes, I'm here. Yes. I'm here. You can hear yes, me. Right? Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, yes. You can please interact with our resource person, ma'am. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you very much, um, Prasida, ma'am. A very good afternoon uh, to each and every one of you, uh, especially to um, our um, regional director, Dorothy Ma'am, and uh, um, Jalajagumari Ma'am, and Ajay Sir, and uh, Sibu Sir, and especially to our resource person, uh, Dr. Varghese Pantalu Karan. 
sir it was such a wonderful session um it was really informative and it really gave us an insight into um, various things it was valuable and information informative session it gave us insight into the vuka world and the vuka generation and the uh, entrepreneurial pedagogy and also how as teachers you know just like just as you mentioned it is very true that we are cornered in the present time and we need uh, we really need innovation for the way we are uh, conducting education now uh, uh, see i am actually a retired teacher and uh, i believe in lifelong learning and i'm still taking a postgraduate diploma in uh, education in education Amazing. management and administration not not for the for a, for working but lifelong learning i believe in so i just keep on learning so i understand the importance of um, lifelong learning and as teachers you know how we can you really gave an insight into how uh, as teachers we can uh, develop children's intrinsic uh, motivation and help them to explore communicate grow play and serve and also the importance of autonomous lifelong and flexible learning and um, help them to uh, come out as uh, you know promote promote their uh, promote them to develop their own vision and to take off just like in an airport take off uh, take off with what they have learned uh, from their schooling whether it is uh, lower level to all the way to their higher education and at the end of it and the end of it all venture out to be become efficient learners and productive citizens in this in the in the vuka world so i found it really beneficial really interesting um, see i am not going to be working anymore so i wouldn't be able to apply much of it so dorothy ma'am i, I don't think uh, there, there were a lot of attendees but i think it's really important for young teachers or te uh, present teachers to uh, attend such a session so i understand you have you have recorded it so it would be a good idea to have to make it available for more teachers so that they can benefit from it so i uh, really thank you ma'am uh, th i thank you sir for providing us such a, a wonderful session and also for dorothy ma'am and her team at the regional center for um, uh, arranging such a valuable session that is beneficial for everybody so thank you once again and thank you for giving me the opportunity to um, talk at this session as well thank you uh, maybe to erisa uh, susan ma'am it is not too late you know you're young you're, you look so young you know, <laughs> i have eight years but you don't have you know <laughs> i have it i have it but <laughs> no, no what i mean is that what i mean is that, <laughs> please believe me this is admission you know we have to change our country we have to allow the children to be nation builders you know i cannot just teach them to do some work somewhere as slaves no it is not they are citizens of the country whatever they do from the kindergarten i say not from after they, they get a job from the yeah. kindergarten onwards let them start building the nation as a as a entrepreneurial nation that is the plan of this particular program i welcome you by the way you know if you are not doing any other job join me you know because this is very <laughs> it is important task for the country not only for the country let me also tell you that's why i put beyond india and beyond i put you know i tell you the reason you know we have a call for example 5th of this month to teach teachers in uh, ghana the republic of ghana a west african country two school teachers from two schools are attending our, our training program you understand what i mean and it's the sierra leone another promising country you know africa also needs this kind of change you know because they are also very young population you know and they don't know they to, if they don't Uh, develop this if they do not take this uh, demographic advantage they are also losing the next uh, era also you know the permanent losers you know we cannot afford india yeah. cannot afford to be permanent loser africa cannot be uh, permanent loser take it as a mission you know of course this is a, i am not earning money i am a professor in a college i i i teach there and earn my money but this is my hobby not just hobby it's a serious work for the nation because i know that, that this kind of change has to come Otherwise, we'll be training a lot of uh, uh, new, new generation learners for nothing. You know, they will be finding themselves in the same trap. And especially, I told you in the, during the meeting, especially the people who live in the slum. You know, just remember them. If they are, uh, if you are giving them conventional teaching, if they are giving them quality teaching, so-called quality teaching, they are remaining within the framework of uh, revised Bloom's taxonomy. It will not liberate them. It's not allow them to take off, as you rightly mentioned. So we have to allow them to take off to break the break the what's called the break the vicious circle you know this is a great service to the nation i believe and i am talking to the highest order 
uh, decision makers of the country with respect to curriculum, with respect to policies. I hope they will be hearing my sound. It's a feeble sound from Kochi, from Kerala, but it's a, it's a sound of warning I important because, you know, if you're doing the same mistake, you know, our future, we are playing with our future. We are playing, we'll be playing with our future. That's what, uh, in summary, I, I tell them. And therefore, please don't go for, uh, of course, they are all insightful. We learn from them, but let us devise something which is changing the paradigms, you know. Uh, we are not shifting the paradigm for the country alone, the whole world. I'm aware of that. I was trained in Germany for my doctoral research, you know, and I know what is happening in Germany. They also look for some kind of transformation like this. So whole countries, all countries are looking for, especially those poor countries like in Africa and our slums, you know, in India, our poor people. You know, we have to do justice to them. That's a, that's my concern. I welcome you, by the way. <laughs> sure, I wouldn't mind doing anything that I can. You are never too old for this, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I, I see. We, we, when you were talking about, you know, uh, people not coming up and uh, uh, using their abilities and all of that, I, I'll give you an example. I was talking to a young um, guy who just finished his um, engineering degree and he's waiting for his exams. I mean, waiting for his results. So I was asking him, "Are you going to go to the next level of studies?" And he said, "No, no, no. I'm done with my studies." And I said, "Well, look at me. I'm 60 plus, and I'm still studying. You're only 23, and you're telling me that you're studying." So it's just the mindset that people have to change in terms of, you know, lifelong learning has to happen. Not, not just for making money, but for acquiring knowledge and, uh, uh, in, you know, giving an input into the society in whatever way that we can. So, so you're you were talking about your voice being feeble. No matter how feeble it is, it needs to be heard loud and clear but by many more teachers because we are the change agents and we can change uh, students when we are, you know, when we teach them. So, and because we do have an influence on them, right? You know, not only that, uh, 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 lifelong learning is important for them, without which they will not survive in the book world. Right, exactly. exactly. I knew that, you know, my students are, uh, you know, most of our students in graduate engineering college is being placed. Uh, place means that people come uh, before they pass out, they, they choose our children. Well, I'm good. But at the same time, I can see that, you know, they choose the entrepreneurially minded people only. You understand what I mean? So yeah. therefore, it is very important if they want to go for a career even, you know, they have to be lifelong learners, all these properties they should have. And the countries are choosing only those people. So they cannot survive in this new world exactly. without an uh, entrepreneurial mindset. That's why we want to develop it be, being a habit and it has to be developed from kindergarten onwards, you know. That is why we are applying this to, again, to an answer to the Sibusa, you know, we are giving an, as a homework, you know, because, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's not something that can be taught. It's something that can be caught. There's a value, attitude, skill, mindset. These things cannot be taught. They have to be caught. That imbibe. It's a very slow process. So it may take 15 years, you know, 15 years of schooling will be sufficient for time for them to absorb this kind of attitudes and values and mindset. That is why I push it to, I don't want to disturb what is happening in the schools today. This is a major problem, major issue that I don't want to enter into. But we can change what is happening at home for good. As I told you, it's a good thing if you uh, make the, the family ecosystem also conducive for learning of the children. Thank you, Elizabeth, ma'am. Thank you, Vargis, sir, for responding to her. Uh, one thing we understood is that uh, age is not a, a matter of fact in an education, as especially is concerned. So, ma'am, you are still young enough to carry on this legacy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I need all the Thank support you. from the center, but yes, I, I will continue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, ma'am. Anyone else uh, from our participants wants to interact? Ma'am, one person, ma Mr. Ali, who rose his hand. So, Ali, sir, Mr. Uh, I think, ma'am, Ali, sir, is not there. I think he left, ma'am. Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, so, anyone else? Or uh, or I will invite my colleague. That, ma'am, is also, uh, I mean, uh, the, uh, whom I was referring to, no? the national faculty for And uh, Rajesh, sir, I, uh, was the person I was just sharing about the principal. Jalja ma'am, ma can you please come online? Yes, ma'am. Ma ma actually, the voice of uh, you and madam was not clear, so I didn't hear actually, but now so audible. Yeah. 
thank yeah, you. Ma'am, please, ma'am, uh, yeah, ma'am. Please, please share your views, ma'am. Please. Yeah, okay. It's not not for crossing, no. For sharing my views away, isn't it? I think. Uh, no, I think. Ma'am, you can tell, and there is one person who deep uh, Satyan uh, who has uh, put a uh, message for okay. sir. I will deep us Satyan, madam. I, madam has put a okay. message telling thank you, Vargis sir, for the wonderful presentation. And to let us know the innovation in education, the teachers she has come here. And if Deepa Ma'am is around with us, she can uh, say a uh, what is a thank you to uh, Sir. And also Grishma Nair Sir is asking for Vargisa's number. So uh, and uh, if Sir is willing or to give the email or something, it will be nice. And if Grishma Ma'am also can, uh, come online after Dr. Jalza Ma'am's. Uh, uh, views, then it will be nice uh, that you be, will conclude with both of your remarks. Over to Dr. Lalda. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, President, ma'am. Uh, really, a very wonderful, thought provoking session. What uh, is Pandalu uh, Karen's are sharing and uh, our Gadgets uh, are singer parents and uh, Elizabeth Susan's. Uh, discussion and everything was making this session a very active and Sibu sir also was asking a very relevant question on this. I am also from education um, department means my discipline is uh, especially education. So I think um, I was also very eagerly hearing all these discussions. Sir, can I call um, uh, your system of education as an alternative education, one of the thing uh, which you are uh, going along with simultaneously along with our conventional quality education, entrepreneur pedagogy, entrepreneurial pedagogy is going as an alternative method to survive in the field of education. And um, uh, we believe there also was telling that it is a paradigm shift, of course, because this uh, world of complexity in education, especially at this uh, pandemic period. Our children, even from lower classes, lower KG to higher education, students are struggling a lot, but they are finding their uh, means uh, they are consoled with the, the availability of e-support services, e-learning services and e-learning platforms. And Definitely, the scenario has been changed. What are maybe the advancements in the field of education? And um, however, this entrepreneurship is becoming one of the biggest um, uh, objective of education. The relevance of taxonomy of Bloom and the other everything is as such will sustain in the field of education as it becomes the basic stones of philosophy of education and principles of education. Because without knowing anything, without making the concepts uh, in an understanding level, nobody can apply. Actually, this entrepreneurial pedagogy is based on application of the learned things, and it is the analysis and synthesis of uh, the concepts already uh, we attained through learning process in all the field. And step by step, uh, we can develop this skill-based entrepreneurial uh, pedagogy from the small classes onwards, and we can develop up to the productive level of higher education, no doubt. And uh, Sir's presentation was really giving a lot of uh, uh, discoveries regarding this uh, C, uh, five C models, five C concepts means uh, C concepts means five C's. That is this creation, celebration, challenge, collaboration, and campaign. And uh, many other uh, innovative thoughts Sir was bringing forward. At first, by hearing the word Palikudam, I was, the, the image and the concept immediately came to my mind is the Palikudam school at Kottayam Kalakipudi. I think um, they all are familiar with that alternative system of education. Actually, uh, how I am calling it as alternative, it is having some particular uh, 
uh, vision uh, in the field of um, education, especially focused on game-based education or play school, play learning, learning through play or um, play way methods. Especially in primary education, they are giving too much importance for edutainment. Without books, children are flying uh, to their home. Children are flying back to the school without the without the mass of the textbook. And uh, uh, but I understood later that this is something different. And um, definitely, this will also this palikudam will also strengthen uh, the new scenario of education by providing a vision to uh, entrepreneurial pedagogy. But uh, I think this uh, COVID pandemic situation, uh, there are a lot of learning arts. So that is also the effect of entrepreneurial pedagogy. pedagogy. How Baidu apps becomes like this. Now it's a globalized learning app. Alternatively, uh, many other parallel methods are also coming, like Vijay app, eMaster, Silum. Everywhere we can see these type of learning apps, means e-based learning apps. So this will make entrepreneurial uh, training uh, to the public, vision to the public, and people will become uh, more entrepreneur-oriented uh, education and life. How? Because it is the necessity of the time to survive. Whatever pandemics are coming, whatever other uh, natural calamities are coming, we have to overcome all these disasters through entrepreneurship. So that In that way, such uh, vision, such uh, collaboration in the field of education, especially I think uh, from your talk, I understood that it is mainly focused on higher education system. But even for, that is what graduates are mostly identifying the skill of the learners according to the physical condition, their psychological background, their social background. We can make make gamification as a learning strategy by providing um, many. Uh, e-based apps for bringing up the learners for small, small uh, entrepreneurship. Means, I think, um, especially Sir was, Rajesh Sir was telling that the experiment we have done, and uh, I was also a small part of that uh, work with Rajesh Sir, and uh, we were working on that with the gamification model in the real platform of uh, students who are um, studying in a special school. With the most of them were with the cerebral palsy, but the gamification learning and the, uh, which will be uh, which was uh, mainly collaborated with e-learning really gave an inspiration and motivation to that particular learners to uh, uh, move on in their educational process. If a small type of entrepreneurship training is also to be involved uh, in this particular pedagogy. I think we can involve uh, the, the, the share or the, uh, we can involve the partnership of this particular group also, especially challenged people also can be involved, can be, uh, be together with us for uh, contributing for the field by starting up a little small, small entrepreneurial uh, things uh, through e-learning strategies and e-learning training. So that also have to be uh, incorporated with SIR's uh, vision that will definitely help uh, the uh, new generation for survival, I think. Because there is no that type of, there are some uh, models of learning based on entrepreneurial pedagogy, but in uh, action or in practical sense, uh, these type of special learners are not coming forward with a productive capacity. And uh, when uh, we can mix with this parenthood help and the parental implementation, parental involvement, along with the skill training, I think uh, these type of uh, models can be implemented in a very 
big manner in a broad sense all over the world let uh, god help iu sir uh, for uh, uh, contributing such a wonderful scenario in the field of education through uh, collaboration with e support entrepreneurial pedagogy and skill training uh, that is also uh, will be possible for us and i was thinking in that way when i was uh, listening all this talk from all of you and uh, i think uh, especially our learners of igno uh, are being benefited by this type of talk and we have taken a lot of time that also but anyway this was very fruitful and uh, meaningful and it was very dynamic also in discussion and i am also very much thankful uh, to you sir for presenting this topic and let us hope uh, to have a very practical uh means uh, educational philosophy based uh, advanced pedagogies in education scenario let it be a, a hope of our uh, the paradigm shift thank you very much sir thank you prasida ma'am and thank you all uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, as a response a, a few sentences you know uh, i was just uh, focusing on uh, I, i repeat maybe not a maintenance maintenance of the current system because the, i believe that current system is beyond me sir i'm not hearing well can you hear me properly can you hear oh, me okay okay sir yes anyway yes, yes, so i am not i am not speaking yes, about ma'am. maintenance of the current system i am speaking about uh, uh, not maintenance of the current system rather a paradigm shift which really i really mean that because you know without paradigm shift we are just you know you know we are a corner and we are having all by yourselves or all other tools you told it is against teachers you know it will be making teachers redundant useless you know teachers uh, the by yourselves teach then how why should teachers teach us you know that is the question without uh, without the teachers the if the students can score a lot of marks for example that happened in the previous exams then the parents started asking hey, why should then this is okay this is sufficient you know Uh, students going to school is not important. Rather, the, they get better marks if they don't go to the school. So why should they go to the school and get less mark? You know, you understand what I mean. So we should see that we are challenged as a teacher, as a community. Teachers are challenged. That's the important thing you have to perceive. And we should, uh, when we are challenged, what should we do? We should go to our core competencies. And our core competencies is to uh, not to impart knowledge. Today, by the way, is sufficient to impart knowledge. but our uh, our purpose is to impart skill set mindset and values attitudes you know that's the purpose of school that's the purpose of ecosystem schools and ecosystem of families and we are capitalizing on that if we are not doing that in the right time all our research we do all our work we do will be against us you know why do you say you are supporting you are we are working against teachers you know because that is what teachers are doing today teachers are imparting its uh, uh, knowledge by just have also imparting better knowledge in a better colorful way so who will be redundant teachers will be at loss you know so we have to think about our community i am i don't think that is not just made for higher education it's not i am speaking about very kindergarten onwards pre school level they have to change so that we at the higher education we have better candidates which who can be taught in entrepreneurship i distinguish the between the word entrepreneurial and entrepreneurship they are two different thing entrepreneurial is an adjective it will describe the education as a whole entrepreneurship is meant for few people 5% of the people but every child requires entrepreneurial mind to survive in the uka world that is the thesis and i want the research says you know, more and more research says to join hands with me i am not a research in education of course i published 12 books and papers in engineering, engineering education but of course in view of a uh, general education also at the same time i want a lot of good researchers who will push as a group this agenda this idea to the whole the country because our country badly need this kind of transformation if you don't do that at this moment a point of time you know our whole demographic advantage will be lost i speak not only for india i told told you i also speak about africa they have also lose their they have a big demographic advantage they are young people they are a young country and africa is also a young country they have to capitalize on it and if you are teaching them old ways old paradigms of course i didn't say that it is redundant absolutely i just told 
that Bloom's taxonomy is necessary but not sufficient. That's what I said. Please take a note of it. It is necessary. I know that it is necessary, but it is not sufficient. It will not make a career or life for a VUCA citizen, a child learner who has to engage with VUCA world. It will not be sufficient. That is the point. Don't misunderstand me. I don't want, that's why I don't touch the schools. You know? Let the schools be like that. Let the school run based on Bloom's taxonomy because Bloom's taxonomy is something which is developed through uh, 20 years. So I don't want to change it. You know? Rather, I want to change something. The families, it should be useful for them, families also, but at the same time, bringing slowly this kind of transformation to the education so that our teachers, ourselves are not making ourselves redundant. You know, that's a very bad scenario. You know, we teachers are making ourselves redundant. You know, that's the that's ultimate uh, uh, bad scenario because, you know, we are working against our own existence as teachers. You know, it should not happen. We have to be creative enough to invent new things. As teachers, educators, you know, I will recommend that a lot of resources should be mobilized on this central theme of transformation of paradigm shift. Otherwise, we'll be uh, doing a, a disservice to the nation. That's my thinking. Thank you, Vagis, sir. I think someone raised the hand. Miss Deepa Satin, I think she raised her hand. Miss Deepa? Ma'am, Yes, ma'am. Gratitude, sir. And also, Kalpana, ma'am, uh, can also come online after this to express uh, uh, gratitude to sir and also Grishma Nair, ma'am. So, three of you yes. will post the vote of thanks on behalf of Ignu. Um, by being the participant, and then ma'am will wind up. Thank you, Dorothy, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, please, uh, Deepa, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, sir, and everyone else. Uh, it was a pleasure to be uh, the part of this very informative program, although I couldn't hear it from the beginning and due to some other engagement speak loss. <laughs> Uh, the concept of polycurum, which you just imparted, seems to be very encouraging during the pandemic times like this. Uh, thank you so much, sir, and the entire team to have organized this eventful session. Wish you all a very cheerful evening. Thank you so much. Thank you, Deepa, ma'am. Thank you. Anyone else? Ma'am, Kalpana, ma'am. Kalpana, ma'am. And then Grishma, ma'am. Grishma, ma'am, are you online? Yes, ma Grishma, ma'am, is online, but Kalpana, ma'am, is not there. So, Grishma, ma'am, please, can you come? Or anybody she... else who wants to say uh, express gratitude, then we can wind up. See, so this is one opportunity for you to make your presence, and the YouTube will be, and uh, this video will be uploaded in the YouTube channel of the Dinia, ma'am, or Minu, ma'am. I'm just reading out the name. Dina, ma'am. Ah. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Um, it's noisy here, and so if I join in the audio, yes, it's fine. You can join audio, please. No, no issues, ma'am. I think she has a small baby also, ma'am. So I think she will be. A Okay, I, I would suggest that if you have some uh, further discussions, you can also, uh, I can put my mail ID. You, are, you have my mail ID, no? So yes, sir, yes. So I will, I will share this. your mail ID sir, in the chat box. Continue. This is not the end of the program. As I already mentioned in the, the presentation itself, this is a mission and this is something which you have to do together. Especially, uh, I'm not an educator. In, I do not have B.A. or M.A. or doctorate in that. Okay. I have a mechanical engineer. But at the same time, you know, I, I had great passion and uh, interest in this area because I clearly perceive certain things which I really want to. Uh, I want the research to be done by you, or rather, not by me, because I cannot do this kind of research in education. But I can support it because of this uh, this particular thing. And maybe uh, this is something a positive result out of our uh, all our discussions is that you know if you can streamline our research, uh, if it's possible for you. Uh, to towards a god, there will be a research group from Kochi, <laughs> which will be <laughs> sending a powerful message to the nation. You know, that could be a very interesting uh, result for our discussion. 
Uh, this is something which you could think about when you're at your organization. Dr. Shibu also, maybe uh, from Mahatma Gandhi University, will be also joining. I imagine this is very important for our, uh, it's not a, something personal agenda. It's, this is a national agenda. It's very important for our nation to survive and to make use of the uh, our de uh, demographic dividend. You know, otherwise, we'll be having a lot of dividend and we are not making use of it. You know, we are just uh, dealing it in a, in a, in a, in a way. Uh, which is not uh, futuristic enough. Uh, that's my thinking. Of course, you can critically analyze this issue, whatever I suggested. I don't consider it as a dogma, rather it as a, as something flexible, can be changed, but based on the research. You know, that's something which is very important. Okay, so that's my final <laughs> statement. Uh, we can continue our uh, interaction. Yeah. Through. Thank you. Thank you, Vargis sir. I think uh, we had a very long session today since and Vargis sir has been gracious enough here. I think he was the first or second person to join the meeting. I suppose uh, sharp 10, 15, I think uh, sir had logged in and he was ready with his presentation. Sir, I'm really uh, very great on behalf of all at Regional Center Cochin. I extend my sincere gratitude uh, to you for your wonderful session, sir. And uh, uh, I am sure we all at IGNO Regional Center Cochin, as well as our students of education also, uh, will be happy to take your mission forward, uh, whatever you yes, have. Yes, uh, that's another thing you could uh, make your, if your students have internships, you know, if they want to take internship, they can do internship in this particular, developing this kind of materials. You can think yeah. about it. It, is, it will be really interesting because, you know, they will be then touching with something totally new. It will be insightful for them also. But I don't, you can think about that. Your, yes, for example, your doctor students, we have your MED students, they can do projects with us because that is the way I forward, I thought, you know, because it should be yes. some action research taking place so that things can research. be. Yeah. Yes, sir. Research, Definitely. Uh, some kind of men, uh, uh, in, internships or uh, research, uh, not only at B -ed level you have research, I, I have heard, MED level you have research, or B, uh, doctor level you have research. So you can get themes. And you can also, together, you can apply for funds also, you know, project, uh, education projects. Because this is a, being a new idea, I imagine it will uh, attract funds, uh, not only from government, also from other agencies. But I need our, uh, your uh, support uh, as an educator, you know, as a doctor, the research and educator. So that's something which is very important. And otherwise, you know, I, I haven't doctored in a kind of engineering that may not be good enough, you know, for me to apply for that. So. The, all these things, you know, to help. I'm ready to support you. Of course, uh, certain framework. We are a very small organization. That's why I told you a feeble voice from Kochi, you know, very small organization. But at the same time, together, uh, Kochi has made a lot of changes in the country. I imagine. <laughs> and you can really uh, continue to do that. Uh, that's our, our father's need, our mother's need. Yeah. So, thank you, sir. On behalf of. Uh, yes, uh, Jaljaman, you want to speak something, Jaljaman? No, no, I was uh, supporting, sir. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah. uh, we are very much uh, pleased uh, to be with, sir, for uh, further words on this one. That's what I was saying. Thank you. Let's let's explore uh, the future. You know, this is, yeah, our life is very short, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> very, yeah. very gray. Let us do something useful uh, for the country. You know, that's something yeah. useful. So thank you very much, sir, for sparing your valuable time on behalf of all at IGNO Regional Center Cochin. Especially, I would like to express my gratitude to Vargis, sir, and our regional director, Dr. J.S. Dorothy, madam, under whose leadership and guidance we organized this Innovation Club activity as well. And I'm also thankful to all the learners and especially our teachers and academic counselors who were also part of the session. Though uh, now the numbers are dwindled, but when Sir was presenting, there was a good number of students who were attending and teachers who were attending the session. So, uh, however, this session is uh, recorded and uh, this session would be available on the YouTube uh, link of IGNO Regional Center Cochin. Sir, I would also be sharing this link with you also. Okay. So uh, that I, uh, you I, I wanted because you know, I thought. Is some except of uh, that could be yeah. used. Yeah, and we are also uploading the link on our Facebook page as well, so that more and more students and teachers who are interested can view this session and take this mission forward as well. So once again, on behalf of all, I uh, earnestly thank you, sir, and uh, thank you, sir, for sparing your valuable time for the session, sir. Thank, thank, you. thank you so you. much. Sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Prasida. It was wonderful. Thank you. Great. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah.